We're at Parkhead tonight for one of the biggest and oldest derbies in the world. Nowhere does winning mean more than in this one. It's the traditional New Year showdown between Celtic and Rangers. That's our live football tonight from the Bells Scottish Premier Division. Rangers are top, chasing an eighth successive title. Celtic can't afford to let them get any further away. They'll be at it tonight. Mind you, so will Rangers. Rangers are here at Parkhead. Usual warm welcome. The league leaders by eight points. And it's a lead for Desco in there. Well, almost ready, it seems. Celtic last played on December the 16th. In that time, Rangers have got themselves an eight-point lead. But not so much hospitality, it seems. The door to the dressing rooms is locked it might be a lengthy wait outside what a night we have in prospect here the old firm on collision course once again as i said one of the oldest and the biggest derby games in the world and rarely in recent seasons has there been more riding on it celtic just have to win tonight our guests charlie nicholas and mark hakeley two old firm campaigners down the years who need no more of an introduction than that charlie good to see you again bit of a buzz about the place tonight isn't there yes it's uh we thought the last time the, the, the old firm teams met in the 3-3 draw, it was going to be one of the most exciting games for a long time. It proved to be that, but tonight is crucial for Celtic, especially because Rangers have now opened up a gap. Welcome, Mark. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Has the place changed a bit since you were last here? Yeah, well, it seemed to be a stand missing, but uh, what, a, <laughs> what a stand it is, though. It's right? a fabulous stand, isn't it, what they've managed to, uh, to put up so far? 17, 18 million pounds, is it, Charlie? 18 million pounds it cost them. Uh, it's tremendous. I mean, obviously, it's, it's hard sometimes looking at it uh, from a, a spectator's point of view and seeing that one of the ends bare especially, mm. but uh, it's marvellous that they've came forward the way they have. Wonderful. And they're working on both ends now, which is the next part of the project, and uh, hopefully we'll have one end completed by the start of next season. Now, Mark, fond memories of old firm clashes. Uh, some bad memories too, if uh, the mind serves me correct, but this must rank amongst the best, eh? Yeah, well, I think you get uh, good times and bad times, but I like to think you get more... I seem to have had more good times and bad against uh, Celtic, Celtic. You know, it's always been big games. I mean, you can't get enough big games, can you? I mean, uh, very exciting times, you know, coming into, especially New Year's, the New Year's fixture, it's always very special. Is that one different yeah, than New Year's many, to be honest. To be honest, <laughs> Richard, many. he said far too many, especially at Celtic Park. That's uh, what my body keeps telling me. Anyway. <laughs> I apologise for the bias, Charlie. We have been scouring the archives to, to find a, a Charlie Nicholas goal in these games, but um, the best we came up with was 8 mil and black and white. So, <laughs> it was really no good to You were anybody. doing the Good Morning TV there, weren't <laughs> you? <laughs> <laughs> Touché. Uh, does, does this New Year's Day game mark mean more than the others? I think it's special. I mean, it's, it's historically a special yeah. day. You know, a special day. I mean, it's, it's disappointing, I think, personally. You know, you played in on New Year's Day games. Yep. And I think it is uh, just takes the edge away from it, it you know, I mean, because it sets everybody up for the year, I mean, but over yeah. over the period, that's what it's all been about, and, uh, but no no bigger game, I mean, you know, I played in Milan derbies and these derbies and no comparison. 
Well, they're all a bit special, as Mark was saying. There have been three meetings, in fact, so far this season, and Rangers have the upper hand to date. A win and a draw in the league, and they also won the Coca-Cola Cup tie between the two here at Parkhead. Gascoigne. Great chance there. Good play, good footwork. Looking for Cleland. Great header! Alan Cleland for Rangers! And Hoyle waits in the middle. Poor cross though, one easily by McLaren. Two against two up front here. Selenko and McCoy's together. That's good play by Selenko. McCoy's this gas going racing through the middle. It's great play for Rangers. And This is Tom. And there's Tom's going to try one here. Oh, that is an incredible goal by Andreas Tom. Touch from Richard Goff. This is Gascoigne. Still it's Gascoigne forcing it through. Chance on here for Loudrop. And it's a great goal. It's Andreas Tom who strikes it. Hughes as well forwards. Claims for a penalty kick there as he was challenged and it's given. John Collins starts his run. And it's gone in. Again, Goff's forward, so it is Petrich. Again, there's a fair bit of movement the far side of the box. Gascoigne strikes it in. Solenka to come in, he's got it again. And it's gone in. That's a one goal. Rangers take the lead, but Coyce can't believe it. So Celtic with it all to do now. Tosh McKinley gives the cross. It's Van Hoydon. And that's in. Well, this is quite incredible. Three goals apiece here at Ibrox. It really was some game. Charlie Nicholas and Mark Haitley are our guests tonight. I've asked this uh, of Charlie before, Mark. Why is it that, that both these teams seem to do better at the other place, as it were? Rangers here and, and, and Celtic, of course, down I, at Ibox. I think when you come and play away, the onus is on the home team to come and come out and attack. And I think it takes a little bit of the pressure off, especially the two teams are attacking sides. So I think the game, you know, for the, for the visiting team becomes a an easier place to play, uh, wherever Rangers, wherever we used to go, it was always easier playing away from Ibrox. I mean, people would come and set up defence and be very difficult, you know, very frustrating at times to break down. But you come away to a, a nice big pitch like this, great atmosphere, and it's always it's always easier to play in. You know, the game opens up and, you know, it's an, normally an attractive game to Yeah, to as play I think in. most of the time you go away from home, you can afford to be cautious because your crowd allows you, the only away games, the crowd allows you to be a bit more cautious. Rangers have probably proved to do it better than Celtic over the last few years, but Celtic can still go to Ibrox and play really well, but obviously mm -hmm. cautiously. Mm -hmm. See, I can, I can also understand that the, the, the passion and, and the, the feeling there is for this game in the city, that's fine. But why does it mean so much to Englishmen, such as yourself, to, to the Roberts and the Butchers and the Gascoigns now? Well, you do, you become involved in and it. the Trevor uh, Stevens, of yeah, course. Yeah, I, I, I remember him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he used to play for Rangers yes, once, he did, yeah. <laughs> I'm only kidding. But, um, no, I mean, you, you do become part of it. I mean, it's a... It's a a two-team city I mean the people are fanatic and when you're here you're part of that you know you try to become a part of that and more often than not you get sucked into it you get sucked into the whole environment and uh, it is it's passion I mean football I always played my football with passion and always and you get involved with that you, you're the I, same I, I mean I think it brings out the best in people yeah. especially people like Mark but like for in years and years ago Celtic were always uh, seemingly famous for the Catholics and we had people like Douglas and Danny McGrain and, and two particularly became great Celts and were Protestant but were absolutely mm -hmm. magnificent players and the feeling they had for Celtic Football Club was incredible and now when you see the Terry Butchers, the Trevor Stevens and Mark Haley's and that coming and playing here they witness what it's all about, it really is quite special mm -hmm. and if you have never witnessed it, wait until you see this tonight live here on Sky Sports, the old firm Celtic against Rangers and Celtic know that they have to win here tonight they've played two games less but they're eight points adrift
And does anybody at Celtic Park need reminding that Rangers have won seven in a row? They're heading for their eighth. That hurts. Live tonight, Celtic against Rangers. Next, the story so far. Celtic Park is the correct title. For Celtic against Rangers. And looking further ahead to the weekend, an FA Cup special on Saturday. How about that? Manchester United against Sunderland. Other highlights from the third round in the same programme, starting at 6 o'clock. And we're live on Sunday at the baseball ground for what is the tie of the round, surely. Derby County, top of the first division, against Leeds United, whose form has been in and out of late. There might just be a surprise there. Dave Mackay and Norman Hunter will be our guests. Scottish football next Monday, 7 o'clock start. Hibs beaten 7-0 by Rangers last time out. And they're lying third in the Bells Scottish Premier against Aberdeen, who won the Coca-Cola Cup, of course, a few weeks back. Celtic against Rangers. We've seen the old foam clashes that uh, have taken place so far this season. Our form check continues after that 3-3 back in November. John Collins opened the scoring in Celtic's next game against Hearts. Pasquale Bruno pulled one back for them before Collins, second, restored Celtic's lead. And he went on to complete the hat-trick in real style. Rangers faced a tough-looking trip to Easter Road, but McCoist's early goals settled their nerves. A stunning strike from Gordon Dury capped a fine display from Walter Smith's side. Hearts were next for Rangers. McCoist again opened the scoring. Paul Gascoigne set against Kilmarnock. Celtic went behind to a goal from Ali Mitchell. Tom Brown then put them two up. But Celtic hit back hard before half time. Tom and Grant combining for their first. Tom got the equaliser. Van Hoydonk put Celtic ahead after the break. And then got a second to complete a fine comeback by Celtic. Gascoigne was sent off in Rangers' final Champions League game as they crashed out of Europe. Celtic's next match was at Easter Road. Jackie McNamara's goal set the tone. Yes, Tom, good skills there, getting away from Mill. The chance is on here, and it's Miller Donald. It's another terrific goal by Celtic. Donald. Good movement off the ball by Celtic. Kim comes across. It's Van Hoydong. And that's another superb goal. Sumo for Simon Donnelly. Steadies himself. And it's number four. A goal from Gordon Dury was enough to secure Rangers all three points at home to Partick Thistle. Celtic then met Falkirk. And hold on, and Celtic make the breakthrough. And that win reduced the deficit at the top to a single point. After a goalless draw against Motherwell, Rangers extended their lead over the Christmas period. Oleg Solenko opened the scoring against Kilmarnock. Gascoigne scored with a cheeky effort.
Last time out, Rangers thrashed Hibs. Charlie Miller got the first. Gascoigne got another fine individual goal. And Gordon Dury got four. This was a real thrashing. So Tommy Burns and Walter Smith go into tonight's match in the knowledge that this is the most important derby fixture in recent years. So Celtic's season played 18, won 12 of the 18, beaten just once by Rangers. Scored 35 and conceded 15, 41 points. At home, that defeat by Rangers spoils a pretty good record, won five of the nine. Van Hoedunk's got 11 now, Collins nine. Rangers played 20, won 15 of them, beaten once by Hibs, but they exacted revenge for that at the weekend, beating them 7-0, scored 37 now, conceded 10, 49 points. Away from home, they're unbeaten, won seven of the nine. That's great, we saw them live at Motherwell recently. Dury leads the way now with 11, he's got five of that 11 in the last two games. McCoist's got eight, Selenko seven, Gascoigne six. And our guests here tonight, Charlie Nicholas and Mark Haightley, who we'll grab a word with in a moment. But the uh, Bell Scottish Premier Division worth a look at before we do that. Bottom to top, Motherwell, who were beginning to put something together, Charlie, weren't they? Dragging themselves away from the bottom end, but um, stuck down there again now. Yep. Of course, it's the top end we're interested in tonight. Celtic played 18, 41 points. Rangers play 20, 49. That's why Charlie Celtic cannot afford to lose tonight, can they? No, oh, cannot afford to lose. And uh, this is usually a, a dangerous sign when, when Rangers come here not really needing to win. But uh, Celtic have to get the victory to really keep the pressure on and keep the league uh, going all the way. And there's every chance they can do that. The top scorers in Scotland, Dury, 11 from 15 now. Same total as Van Hoydonk from one game more. Collins. 9 from 16, McCoy's 8 from 15, he'll be on the bench tonight, we understand Ali McCoy, and Darren Jackson of Hibs has got 8 from 20. Seven in a row for Rangers, Mark, does it become ever more difficult in terms of motivation to keep a run like that going? Yeah, I think it becomes more demanding on uh, management more than, more than players, I mean, because I, they have to look at a different side of management where they have to motivate people year in, year out, and I think that's, you know, it's difficult. I mean, a successful side you try and keep together and mm. keep together and blend it over four or five years, ideally. Here in uh, Rangers, the, the demand is so much that they have to keep changing personnel around year in, year out, three in or th four in, four out, yeah. and to keep fa faces, faces fresh. And, and, and more than half a mind, presumably at different times, on European success. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's even more problems because with the three foreigners, or, you know, that's hopefully be changing shortly. But they've, they've always had that problem of trying to keep a good side together with with the three foreigners has there been a better time than this in recent seasons charlie for celtic to have a, a good old go at rangers in the chase well this is certainly the best out of the seven years that they've won the title that celtic have competed and really i don't think celtic have even been second in these seven years so it kind of sums up the way celtic have been going but in saying that i think if celtic can win this one and stop it then it'll be fair enough but i think if rangers get eight I really seriously worry for Celtic because I think if they get eight, the determination, mm. the hunger will really be back again and they'll be determined to get nine. Well, the man in charge at Parkhead these days, of course, is Tommy Burns and he's with Davy Provin. Tommy, you picked the same side that beat Falkirk 18 days ago. How confident are you that they might do the job for you tonight? Well, obviously, to pick the same team, Davy, you've got to be confident. But, uh, I've got every confidence in the group of players we've got here. Uh, we know it'll be a difficult game. Rangers are a very good side. They're playing very well, very consistent. But we feel we're a good side and we're getting better. And we feel we're ready to meet the challenge tonight. It'll be a big night for Malky Mackay, who'll make his old firm debut. Have you had a few words with him? Well, if I could get him, David, he's locked himself in the toilet. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. I just told him to go and enjoy it. I mean, it's a big occasion, David, and he's waited a long time to get an opportunity in a game like this. And it's entirely up to him. We want to go and enjoy it. You don't want to go and worry about games like this. You just want to go and take in everything that's, that's good about it. How frustrating has it been for you having to sit on the sidelines as Rangers stretch that lead at the top? That was difficult when you see them going and winning the games because you know you're going another three points further though you've still got the game to play. But uh, to be fair, I feel it's been uh, beneficial to us because we've had a few knocks and wee strains and things like that and the 18 days has given us a chance to get the group back together in 100% uh, fitness again. 
Have you worked them hard to keep the fitness level up? Well, a bit of both, Davey. We've worked them hard and we've, we've given them a good rest as well. So, you know, hopefully it's came at the right time for us. And you feel they're in, they're in the right mood? Well, they're in the right mood, OK. Eh? Thanks, Tommy. Enjoy it. Thanks a lot, Davey. Well, the big question, of course, in these parts, can Celtic stop Rangers winning another title? That's Tommy Byrne's opinion, surely, that they can. But what are they saying outside? It's an important game, but we've got the troops to do it. Better place than we've ever been. We've got a psychological advantage on us, but we still have the two games in hand, so hopefully we can tag them back tonight. This will be a big decider on who's going to win the league tonight. Rangers are like eight points ahead, but they've played two games more, so it's all in Celtic have all to do. There's nobody been putting pressure on them, and this year Celtic's doing it. I don't think they'll go on and win it. If we win the night, I think we're there with a good chance. We'll win the night. And then your two games in hand, I think we'll, we'll do them OK. Rangers have been playing quite well the last couple of weeks, but Celtic playing the best football I've seen in a few seasons. And uh, I think we'll, we'll do it tonight. I don't think the, tonight's game is very important. I think Celtic have been playing better football overall this season, and I think Celtic are a better side. So I think Celtic will win tonight, but uh, I don't see it as being a big crucial factor. And you're right, bang in the middle of those uh, little selection, or that little selection there, Gary Jacobs, the boxer. Charlie Nicholas and Mark Haley with us. Uh, tonight. Uh, seven in a row as we've spoken about with Mark, Charlie, from Rangers' point of view. That's great, but, but not just sitting on the sidelines watching Rangers stretch their lead this time around. Watching them compile that sort of record must be very frustrating if you're a Celtic fan. Oh, tremendously. It's real disappointment <coughs> for Celtic supporters, and especially the way it's been done. I mean, Celtic haven't even been second in these seven seasons. It just shows you the gap that Rangers opened up. They went and they bought well, they went big time, and Celtic have paid the penalty for standing still for too long. But are they, are they, I mean, you look around here now, the, the, the attempts are being made, are they not? Well, if not to catch up, but certainly yeah. to make an impression. Well, certainly they've went forward, but all this stand and everything you see is not really just the guys who have come in and took over the club. This has been done by the Celtic supporters. The Celtic supporters have told everybody who's <coughs> took over, we'll give you 18 million pounds. In fact, they gave them something like 25 it was million. It a share pounds. issue, wasn't it? The, the, they've given 25 million pounds from the supporters. This is down to the supporters, not the people who are in charge. There's a message there somewhere, is there, from Charlie Nicholas? No, not at all. It's just facts. I think the Celtic supporter is saying <laughs> to you, we'll give you as much money as possible if we can stop Rangers. OK, live tonight at Parkhead, Celtic against Rangers. And when we come back, we'll be hearing from another celebrity Celtic fan. Can you spot who it is? Watching Sky Sports. Parkhead, to be more precise, Celtic against Rangers. Second and first in the Bell Scottish Premier right now. 238 league games down the years, 318 in all. The last 12 in the league, four wins each and four draws. But the last 13 here, Celtic have lost eight of them. Two have been drawn. They haven't won a New Year's Day derby for some eight years. When they did, they went on to win the title. Is there an omen there, I wonder? Well, that celebrity guest that we were talking about, of course, Rod Stewart, who is here tonight. The last time he was here, it was to open that big new stand that uh, Celtic have built. I think somewhere in there, there is a seat with his name on it. Big Celtic fan, of course. His pre-match today was very interesting. Jeff Shreves was with him. In their own backyards this week, plenty of Celtic supporters dreamt of scoring the winner against Rangers tonight. But superstar Rod Stewart rehearsed on his very own private pitch. This morning, before flying to Parkhead in his own jet, Celtic fanatic Rod had a workout with his personal <coughs> soccer coach, Wimbledon striker Dean Holdsworth. Find these, okay. quick hands, OK? Shine it at the corners as hard as you can. Great goal. I I keep that one. Don't swear on that one. Rod sort of you know, expressed his love for kicking the ball about and invited me down here. And it was um, something I really enjoyed doing and we've just carried it on and um, we've took, took it into a training session now and uh, take it a bit more seriously. And uh, if you could see the guy's will to play football and actually love of running up and down this in pitch, it's unbelievable. And I mean, his enthusiasm is great. And it gives me a lot back when I see him wanting to do it and I feel tired and he's running past me. I went down to Brentford for trials, but it was exactly the same time as I uh, got a start in music, you know, and I was a lazy bugger and I just couldn't get out of bed. 
you know, music uh, gave me the opportunity to stay in bed another couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> so I took up music and, you know, here I am today with my own pitch. Why did you choose Celtic? What made you become a lifelong Celtic supporter? Um, it was way back in the early 70s when I first met Dalgleish. Um, just when he'd signed for Celtic, I think, we were at dinner at a place called Dalhousie Castle, I think, it was just when he got married. And he took me down there to meet Jock Steen. I don't know if you've ever met the late Jock Steen, but once you meet him, you're a Celtic supporter. You know, because he always made football sound like poetry. And that was the early 70s, and I've been a Celtic supporter ever since. <laughs> Can you tell me a bit about the old firm derby? What sort of atmosphere is it? What sort of passions does it arouse? Oh, it's, it's, it's like any other derby. I mean, no, it's not like any other derby. It's not like Spurs play Arsenal. I can't put my... I've only been to about six, you know, because I live in the States, and it's difficult to get there. But it is... All the songs are different, the, the passions are different, it's, it's just words, I don't know words to describe it. It'll be electric, and Celtic have got to win, they've got to win, you know, it's, it's sad for Scottish football that it's now, it's now a two-horse race, you know, it's, uh, I wish there was more competition, it would be better for Scottish football if there were more teams involved, but unfortunately there's not. And Celtic have got to win tonight to keep it open, otherwise Rangers have walked it again. Mind you, it's good for Scottish football, isn't it, that it's a two-horse race. It's uh, often in recent years been over by now, hasn't it? Without being too unkind, it really has. Yeah, more or less. Uh, they've, they've had a spell where Aberdeen chased Rangers on a couple of occasions, Mullerwell, although it wasn't particularly that close. But in all honesty, uh, if there's one team going to stop Rangers, it's going to be Celtic. Mind you, what a way to prepare for a game from a supporter's point of view, to work out on your own pitch, fly in in your own jet, as you do. It's quite I nice, do that most days myself. <laughs> anyway, it's no so different to me. <laughs> Would he have given it all up, do you think, to be a footballer? No. Can't imagine. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think no. so. I wouldn't think so. <laughs> it's uh, Celtic Park tonight, as they call it in these parts. Parkhead to the rest of us. Celtic against Rangers, live here on Sky Sports. And Davy Proven is waiting for us with the team news. Davy, what can you tell us? Thanks, Richard. Yeah, both sides have handed their team sheets into the referee's room now. And we can have a look at the, the two sides. First of all, let's have a look at the Celtic side. Not surprisingly, it's unchanged from that which beat Falkirk 18 days ago. Now, neither Peter Grant nor John Hughes are available to Tommy Burns this evening, and their influence will certainly be missed tonight. And that means an old firm debut for Malky Mackay, who will partner Tommy Boyd in the centre of the back four. Phil O'Donnell will continue in midfield beside Paul McStay and John Collins, with Simon Donnelly making up the four. And up front, Pierre Van Hoydonk will partner Andreas Tom. As far as Rangers are concerned, Walter Smith not surprisingly names the same side that beat Hibs 7-0 at the weekend, and a strong-looking side it is as well. Andy Gorham in superb form at the moment, and in front of him, the three men who've been the cornerstone of Rangers' domestic success this season, Richard Goff, Alan McLaren and Gordon Petrich. Further forward, Paul Gascoigne and Brian Loudrup will be asked to provide the invention and the supply for a front pairing of Oleg Selenko and Gordon Jury. And this is a Rangers side that has gone 16 league games unbeaten. David, thanks very much. Mark, I'm just sitting here wondering, 18 days since Celtic last played, Rangers have had a couple of games in that time. Mm -hmm. Who's going to benefit more? Rangers because they've played or Celtic because they've had well, a rest? it can work both ways. I mean, every team loves a little rest over, you know, over the Christmas spell. And it's worked one way it's worked well for them they've got the rest but another way they've they've got the suspensions which you know they've got two key players out i feel the key players for celtic peter grant loves and, uh, the game, well they're, they're two what? two leaders i think yeah, yeah. hughes and uh, peter more, more times than not these games is not always settled by a bit of brilliance mm. occasionally we see it but it's full physical contest it's who's up for it the most yeah. and grant and, and hughes have that that physical presence in Celtic yeah, almost. Typical, typical old firm players. You yes, know, very. Very, yeah. very up for it. And, and I think that I think personally, I think they'll miss them badly tonight. But in terms of the break, you don't think that will either either, either benefit or or distract Celtic? Probably might be a little bit rusty first 10, 15 minutes. You know, you don't play for a while and you often get like that. But you know, it comes back quickly. I mean they've got they'll have fresh legs. I mean they've they've been rested up and they've you know, obviously been looking after themselves over Christmas. Of course. Over the year, of course. <laughs> you, and, uh, else, you? you know, but as you say, Rangers have come in off a off a off a, off a great win against Hibs, so they'll be cock over and they've also, you know, opened up a gap at the top of the table. I mean it's great as Charlie says, they're not coming in needing to win a game, you know. Yeah. Okay, well let's hear from Walter Smith and he is with Davy. Walter, not surprisingly, the same side that beat Hibs on Saturday starts again for you tonight. Was there ever a, a temptation, given his record in these games, that you might have put Ali McCoy into this one? No, I don't think so. I think uh, the present moment substitute uh, would be his place. He's been out for a few weeks now, and that's just him just back. So I think substitute the best place for him tonight. 
both yourself and Tommy Burns have been saying that this isn't a championship decider tonight, but just how much of an influence do you think tonight's events might have on the eventual outcome? Well, I think of a psychological influence more than anything else. I don't think anybody can say with the number of games to go that it would settle anything league-wise, but uh, it, has a, it gives a psychological boost if you can win this one as early um, as the season, especially just going into the new year. Well, you beat Hibs 7-0 on Saturday. You go into this one on the back of a 16-game unbeaten run. Do you feel the game is coming at just the right time for Rangers? Well, we are settling down a little bit. We had a lot of injury problems um, throughout the start of the season. Um, this is the third time in a row we've selected the same side, which I think is the first time that's happened for an awful long while. So we've played some of our best football in the last month or so, so I hope that that can continue this evening. There was a lot of talk a couple of weeks ago that perhaps this might be Celtic's year. Do you feel your players have reacted to that? Well, I think they have. I mean, they've reacted to a few other teams who have challenged us in recent seasons as well. And I'm sure they'll react to Celtic. We've been here twice already this season and we've managed to win. So, again, we're hopeful that we can do it tonight. Thanks, Walter. If it's possible for a manager to enjoy this game, do that tonight. Thanks very much. Well, Walter Smith giving nothing away. It won't be settled tonight, he says, but can Rangers win it again? We've got the experience we've been through before. They've, first time in eight years, they've got to try to win a title, but definitely not. Definitely not. It's, it's got to be out of year again. We played uh, Hibernian on Saturday, seven goals. We're looking good at the moment. The, uh, the form of Brian, Brian Rowd, Loudrop and Paul Gasco make a big difference tonight. We are playing so well that I think that really we'll just win most of the games from now on. I don't think Celtic are going to catch up at all. Especially tonight, I think uh, we're going to win 3-1. It's a long way to go yet, but Rangers had a good win on Saturday and they're playing really well just now, so I've got a lot of beating tonight, you know. We always seem to play better when we're away from home, so very confident. It's the closest it's been for years, but any time Rangers, you know, have to win, they always seem to win, especially over the last few years. They won 11 points, Celtic's got two games in hand, they said, easy, we'll beat them. I agree with Walter Smith, there's a long way to go yet. Uh, it's a great game for the fans this evening, certainly, if you're a Rangers or Celtic supporter. That's very important, but I still think there's a long way to go. I think we're a long way to go, and I think we'll do it, by the way. Of course, he wouldn't think anything else, would he? Charlie Nicholas and Mark Haley with us. Uh, Mark, I was just wondering, now Ali McCoy's tonight, and, and Davey mentioned it, more often than not, he settles these games, or has done in recent seasons. Is one of the reasons he's not playing Gordon Dury's form? Five goals in two games for him? Possibly, possibly. I mean, uh, Alistair's been in and out all season sort of thing, but uh, Coisty will always get you a goal, whether he's playing or he's on the bench. I mean, that's the way he is. But so that's uh, nice to know that yeah. there's a bit of an insurance policy there. Absolutely. What, what about this fellow now? Five in two, as I said, eight in seven. Uh, well, that's I think he's, bad, a, he's a little bit hotter than we are tonight in the studio anyway. <laughs> so, uh, no, I mean, goal scoring. Strikers go by goal scoring records. And, and I think even by Gordon's standards, he's, he's on fire at the moment. You know? Walter Smith is of the opinion that he's, he's had to be a little unfair to him and play him in wide positions more often than not. Now he's giving him a run through the middle. That's made the difference. I think so, yeah. I think it was always a difficult position for him to come in and play in the middle, you know, when myself and Alistair were playing especially. I mean, he, he was always a good team player to have. He could, he, could work, he could work the flanks well. He's got a good engine, get up and down. And he's also got an eye for a goal, which he's proving now. That's yeah. Gordon Dury, yeah. who leads the line for Rangers tonight. And a word about Paul Gascoigne, somebody else who's uh, right in form at the moment. You were around, of course, at the club at the start of the season when he came. Has he done as well as you thought, or has he surprised you? No, not really. I think Paul's ability is is, is unquestionable. I mean, I think it's the only thing that was over, hanging over his head was his fitness and his, and his attitude. But uh, as you say, I was I was at the club. You know, I was pretty much with him for a, for a couple of weeks. You know, during the summer, looking after him. And um, he's, a, he's a smashing guy. You know, I mean, there's not. A, I don't think there's a harmful bone in his body. He's just a, a good fun sort of guy. I think. It, I think his, uh, as you see, his ability to turn people in and out. I think his, his sense of humour is a little bit different to other people, and that's what they find difficult to understand. <laughs> that's a nice but, way of uh, putting it. I think so, but I don't, you know, being with him, I don't, and obviously the other lads, there's, there's not a harmful. I think he's such a character. We're forever seen in Scotland, especially, that we hardly ever have any characters now, and here we have one. Yeah. Staring us in the face. And we, we tend to be too critical, I think, sometimes, and forget the ability. I mean, this is just special. Yeah, this sums him up, yeah. doesn't it? This is him. This, this is his strength. Gas going, yeah. going at people with a ball. That is I mean, that's tremendous ability and great composure. Mm. Mm. He does enjoy it, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he did enjoy it. his football, doesn't he? We saw the booking last night that he picked up in that game. That's yes. extraordinary. Yeah, well, well that's ridiculous, again, isn't it? I'm talking about characters, and he said, I've got a fun. And somebody's reacted against that. Yeah. 
awfully glad he didn't pick the red card up, wasn't he? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that would have been. It's fair, yeah. it's just dead. Okay, let's, let's have a look at one or two uh, of the new breed here at uh, Celtic. Jackie McNamara being one of them. His dad, of course, played for the club. £600,000 from Dunfermline recently. How would you describe him, Charlie? Well, I'm now talking about young Jackie McNamara as the new Danny McGrain, which is quite a title to give any young man. He's a lucky mascot. He's, he's not been in a losing side in the Celtic team. He made his, his old firm debut in this 3 3 draw, and uh, I thought he was outstanding. He was really impressive. He loves going forward, and he's formed a really good uh, partnership with Simon Donnelly on the right. Very clever player for such a, a young man. This was a wonderful goal, this, wasn't it? This, this is the way Celtic have been trying to play and, and exercise everything they put into their practice, oh. and this is just exceptional. That young man has just went forward, forward pass, and then immediately went forward after it. It was a great goal. Tremendous compliment in a way, as you say, that new Danny McGrain, but is he the sort of man that can, can handle uh, a, a tag like that at this stage? Yeah, I don't think it's a problem to him. I think he's, he looks in, in control of the situation at the moment, and I don't think there's going to be a problem with young Jack McNamara. His father played, his father was a very talented player also, so he's obviously got good experience to, to learn from. We talked about Van Hooydonk recently, who's at last doing what Celtic fans wanted to see, and that is score important goals. Yeah. What about Andreas Tom? Has he produced as he should have done? He's ability-wise, yes. He's a creator. He makes Celtic tick when he gets the ball. He's a free roll, a bit like Brian Loudrop does at, at Rangers. He's allowed to go anywhere. And there's no doubt about it, this guy's creating goals. He's only scored, I think, three league goals. But uh, I think all round, the, the majority of Celtic supporters are particularly pleased with, with Andy Tom. Andy Tom. Andy Tom. I like nicknames in Glasgow, you know that, don't you? Teasing. <laughs> <laughs> Proven international quality, would that be right? Yes, he's never been a, a, a guy who scores a lot of goals. He's never been that tight. And I think Tommy Burns has found out, I mean, this is a special goal. Absolutely. Not just because it was against Rangers at Ibrox, no, it but was it was a, a good strike. It was a heck of a strike. I mean, he beat Andy Gorham from there. I don't think you'll see too many players doing that. But this guy's definitely got talent. And he and Van Hooydonk are beginning to understand each other, are they? Well, probably he plays just a bit deeper than yeah. Van Hooydonk. And sometimes Rangers, when they come and defend here, you can't really get in behind them too hard. And sometimes he doesn't hurt enough, I think. But all round, the talent's there. I think he's taking the pressure off uh, Van Hooydonk as well, hasn't he? Coming into the side, to be fair. I mean, you go up and play on your own, and there's a lot of pressure on you. A lot of attention is... Yeah. I mean, he's in the side now, and he'll take half of that away from him, and obviously he's reaping the benefits now. I'll also be interested to see what they do with Tom, because at Ibrox in the last match, they played on wide right, and put Donnelly through the middle with Van Hooydonk, and then he swapped it around again, so it'll be interested to see what Tom's going to do today. Has he settled now? I mean, the gold yeah, record has. seems to suggest that, I'll but you, again, we're going getting... back to previous conversations. He's taken some stick recently, hasn't he? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with the accuracy, it seems. That was Paul Gascoigne, by the way. <laughs> A ball to the back window of the studio. <laughs> It's the first time he's found me all year. <laughs> first time he's hit the target. Yeah. <laughs> Back to Van Hooyd. Oh, there he is. Thank you, Paul. Back to Van Hooydonk then. He's, yeah. he's settled. They, they, they've taken to him. Yeah, well, they have. I mean, there's still quite a few convinced, I think. He's on a, a good day goal scoring run at the moment. I think seven and six he's got. But, you know, there's been a lot of critics about this guy, and he scored the goal, so full credit to him. I don't think he'll get a hat trick, Glasgow, he will. Not shooting like he's doing at the moment. <laughs> what a pro, Charlie, amongst everything that's going on around you. There he is, look. Three out of three. Well done. <laughs> oh, he's having a good night already. <laughs> Paul Gascoigne and Rangers at Celtic Park tonight. Live, it's the New Year's old firm derby. If you've never seen one, don't go away. These are special. Almost set. Parkhead tonight, Celtic against Rangers. It's live here on Sky Sports. And what about the outcome? Bookies can't separate them. 13 to 8, the two of them. 15 to 8, the draw you can get here tonight. And uh, the favourite to get the opening goal, well, not too surprisingly, bearing in mind the form they're in. Van Hooydonk, 5 to 1. Dury, 11 to 2. Selenko and Tom, 7 to 1. Collins of Celtic, 9 to 1. Paul Gascoigne, 10 to 1. He's scored in one of these games already this season. 
Made the winner for Ali McCoy here in the Coca-Cola Cup match. Loudrop, 12 to 1, which day 25, and uh, 50s McNamara and Petrich. Now, 1995, what a fabulous year that was on the sports front. And very soon now, we'll be honouring the year's sporting heroes. Panasonic Honours Sky's Champions of Sport 95 is coming soon, but you can vote now. Sky Sports Champion, 0891405011, the individual who has dominated and achieved most on Sky Sports. Sky Sports Champion Team, 0891405012, the Team of the Year. Boss of the Year, 0891405013, the manager or coach who has made an outstanding contribution to lead their team to glory. Shooting Star, 0891405014, the most outstanding young newcomer. Honorary Brit Award, 0891405015, the overseas player who has contributed most to British sports. Sky Sports Hall of Fame, 0891405016, the person you think has made a lasting contribution to sport in Britain. Phone now to cast your vote. Well, our guests here tonight have made a lasting contribution to these games, Celtic against Rangers. Charlie, you're normally on the fence. Are you with Celtic tonight? <coughs> no, I'm going to let the heart rule the head tonight and I'm going to go for Celtic, yes. The heart rule the head? Yeah, it tells just... you differently, does it? Well, Rangers are famous for getting results at Celtic Park when you need them. But my heart says Celtic. And a stormer will take that. Yes. Mark, what do you think? Uh, well, I'll go the other way, obviously. <laughs> but no, I think it'll be a, a result of 2 1. Uh, we could 2 1 either way, but hopefully it's, uh, the Rangers' way. Right, match commentators here tonight. Former Rangers striker, of course, like Mark here. Andy Gray, I've made the call to the Hall of Fame, by the way, Andy. <laughs> and uh, shooting Martin Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Andy, a week ago we were at Old Trafford, Manchester United against Newcastle. This seems very similar in the context of the uh, Bells Premier Division. I think it is. I think if, if Rangers were to take all three points tonight, it would be very, very difficult for Celtic to close that gap, and I think they know that. And I think they go into this game knowing exactly what Alex Ferguson's team knew when we were at Old Trafford, what, a week, ten days ago. They've just got to win the game, and I think that's what makes this New Year's game so special. But it's a game that Rangers traditionally have done very well in the past right well let's have a look at the teams for you Celtic haven't played for 18 days the holiday postponement stopping Peter Grant and John Hughes serving their suspensions so they're still banned but Tommy Burns has remembered the side which beat Paul Kirk last time out and it is the same 11 tonight with particular spotlight on centre-back Malky Mackay who starts a premier game for only the fourth time Nine Scots and two foreign forwards, Van Hoydonk from Holland and the German Andreas Tom. And two different formations we'll see tonight. And one or two things you can look from this Celtic formation. I've got them at 4-4-2 there. But watch for Phil O'Donnell because he's the one central midfield player that I think can get past the front two. When he does that, watch for John Collins just tucking into the midfield alongside Paul McStay. Now when they do that, if they, they can get the ball to McStay, if they can get the ball to Collins in those areas, those two have certainly got the ability to pass their way through Rangers and cause problems. When Collins goes in there, look for Tosh McKinley coming down on the left-hand side, giving them width on the outside. They've got natural width with Simon Donnelly on the right, so they've no problem there. Pierre Van Hoydonk will play the front wall, but Tom drops off, he'll drop off there. He'll drop off on the right-hand side, he'll drop off deep. Just wander about, try and get himself on the ball. 7-0 on Saturday and Walter Smith names the same side though he was tempted to include Alec Cleland to give the team more natural balance on the right with Petric, Solenko and Laudrup Rangers a little more continental than Celtic not to mention the one England international involved tonight who's achieved his usual prominence in the huge publicity prior to this eagerly awaited match Well there's been a lot of talk about this the three at the back, the centre-backs there, and I think there might be a big onus on them tonight. When I look at that Rangers set, I see people who want to go forward, people on wide. Charlie Miller wants to go forward, Gaskin wants to go forward, Loudrup wants to go forward. There's a great danger that they may leave the back three a little bit exposed at times, so perhaps someone has to be a little bit disciplined. 
When I talked about Collins and McStay's passing, I think for Rangers we've got two. And if they can get the ball to Gascoigne, if they can get the ball to Laudrup, those are two players who, maybe not so much with their passing, but with their ability to run with the ball. Run, commit and beat players can cause problems. Brian Laudrup, you never know where he's going to end up. He'll end up right, he'll end up left. Any side that he wants. And with Salenko and Jury in good goal scoring form, this is a threatening looking Rangers side. Well, the rain is falling heavily. It's been a mild day in Glasgow, a dry day until about an hour before the kickoff. So there's another element to the evening. Wouldn't be the same, the New Year's game, Mark, if it wasn't pouring the rain in Glasgow. There would be something missing. It is crunch time, you feel, at Celtic Park. The two great Glasgow rivals, both unbeaten in the league since September. Celtic with a couple of games in hand. Rangers with this eight-point lead that they want so much to stretch to 11. I think the one thing that doesn't worry me about the game because teams can never play for draws. I don't think it draws a bad result for either team. I think Rangers would be fairly happy to come here, pick up a point, and Celtic would believe that even a point still keeps them in touch, means that they're only, if they won the two games in hand, would only still be two points behind Rangers, with a lot of football still to be played. And I just hope that the sides don't come in with that negative thought. Well, that wonderful North Stand on the far side to our cameras is uh, a monument to the modernization of Celtic, not just modernizing the facilities, but you feel there's a more modern attitude behind the rebuilding. Celtic accused for years of living with their heads in the sand. But they're trying to be progressive and reach the standards that have been set so spectacularly across town at Ibrox. Not a bad start. It's my first live viewing of that lovely stand over there it really is huge and if we can take that all the way around it will make what we know here in Glasgow is Parkhead it will make it a wonderful stadium well it hasn't brought Celtic a great deal of luck in the two old firm games that have been played here since the stand was open Rangers came here and won in the League Cup they also won the opening old firm encounter in the league this season Well, they're calling this the most important old firm derby for years. The two captains have been through this plenty of times before. Richard Goff of Rangers, Paul McStay of Celtic. Here they come. The fans here speak for themselves. It needs no extra comment from me. Amazing atmosphere. It's a fixture that speaks for itself. Celtic against Rangers. But there will be a, a sorrowful note struck before the kickoff because 25 years ago that new year the Ibrox disaster in which 66 football fans lost their lives the Celtic chief executive and managing director Fergus McCann and the two managers will announce a minute silence in memory of those who died 25 years ago
Well, the passion will be put on hold for a moment as Les Mottram, tonight's referee, calls the players to line up as for the kickoff. And then there will be the address here from Fergus McCann. Rangers to kick off. It's been the deepest divide in British football for more than 100 years. So often they've met as the top two in the table, but not often enough recently for Celtic, who are desperate to crack this fantastic run of championships for their fiercest rivals. Also a difficult thing to do in the opening moments of a match of this intensity. And John Collins is hurt briefly. Gascoigne's header. Celtic were holding and one or two arms up for offside against Solenko. The ball didn't get that far forward. It's forward now for the home side with Van Hoydon. Looks stay the brushing off aside came behind the Dutchman O'Donnell's foul followed by more of the same from Boyd 
I think what's good about the referees, Mark, they're so experienced in these ties that normally you'd expect a booking very early in the game, but they know, I think, that everyone's got to settle down. So eight points the difference, 11, and the rest will probably be waving Rangers goodbye as they would be expected to steam on towards another title. Celtic had a greater cutting edge about them this season. They've won seven more games than at this stage a year ago when they were really the draw specialists. Played forward by Ferguson. And the flag was up. The one thing that the three centre-backs that Rangers have well built this season on I've got to be careful about it. Phil O'Donnell's got a great engine in the centre of midfield he's a lad that really loves to run forward without the ball and one of them has got to be aware of that man's running McNamara headed away by McLaren Talk about Celtic doing better this season. Rangers, believe it or not, are six points up on their total after the same number of games a year ago. And uh, traditionally, they come strong over the second half of the season. The best uh, start that Walter Smith can remember as a manager. Here's Collins. Tosh McKinley at left back doing well to get past Ferguson. And Petric, but he carried it just too far. Well, that was the area that Walter Smith was toying with a fear of changing. That's Ian Ferguson in this right back area. He had Scott Alec Cleland, who's substitute tonight. But Ian Ferguson's a great competitor. I'm not so sure how good he is as a tackler, as a defender. And perhaps Gordon Petric just might have a bit of a job on in this right-hand side. But Tosh McKinley continues to skip by him as he did then. Kenley's head up. Made a late surge into the international ranks this season, Tosh McKinley, having a join Celtic and increased his profile in doing so. Well, the New Year derby has been something of a nightmare for Celtic followers in recent times they haven't won one since 1988 the last championship year up to run of rangers victories in this uh, fixture which was played at ibrox at this time last year finished 1-1 one -one. it was uh, crackling with uh, atmosphere and attacking invention as uh, more and more of the matches are these days it's Touched touch by Van Hoydonk, Tom was flagged offside and as Andy says it was close. Ah, oh, McLaren had dropped off. See in the middle of the picture, he is just off. But a yard off, it's a very tight one. Petric, who very nearly joined Celtic from uh, Dundee United. Van Hoydonk tries the shot and it was a skimmer and it needed stopping. And that's it, Gorham wasn't caught out. I'm not so sure whether Rangers are being brave or foolish. Shelley in an old firm match. Even in the defensive third, they're looking to pass balls in. As he did to Charlie Miller, really. A hopeless pass in, and he's back to play. He was hounded out of it very quickly. And Celtic were able to get a shot in by Hondo. He hit it really well. Here's Lavra, fed by Solenko. Corner to Rangers. in the section of the ground where the Rangers fans are gathered, around 4,000 of them. Petrus has come up, and Goff as well. That's Richard Goff, who's beaten to it. Well, next day was indicating to the referee that he didn't intend to bring Selenko down, but bring him down he certainly did. Well, I think it was a bit theatrical from Oleg Salenko. McNamara's had it. Van Hoydonk. Celtic have another player hurt. 
It's Donnelly, I think, who's uh, in need of attention. But Les Mockton lets the game go on, and Celtic aren't bashful in that respect. Oh, well, it's Andreas Tom at the far post. Well, that's the threat. This is the area where Celtic should exploit. Ian Ferguson attracted infield again. Let's see how far infield Ferguson is. He can't get out to. Toss McGinley breaks a great ball, and that's a wonderful cross. I think Andreas Tom will be a little disappointed that he hasn't made Andy Gorham do a bit of work. The cross deserved a better header. And I think we'll see McKinley come into that area. More and more. Certainly as he's on the side with his manager and his coach Billy Starkar, I'm sure they'll be saying to him, you've got to get down there, it'll be there for you. Simon Thanks. Donnelly, Celtic player. His father was on the books of Rangers for a while. It'll be a, an interesting family tonight watching. Selenka. Here's McKinley. Petric. Gascoy making a little bit of room for himself where there seemed to be very little. Deciding not to take the throw. Just a little bit right side at the moment, Rangers. So often I've looked up and I've got the ball on this right side and both Laudro on that left side with David Robertson in acres of space if someone could just look up and change the play quickly. Nicely done by Collins. Tom chasing. McLaren gets across in front of him, used his body well to make sure he got the ball. Seen too much of Gordon Jury so far, who's been in exceptional form. His best spell since he returned to Scotland from Tottenham. Four of the seven goals past the Jim Layton and Hibbs. Last time out for Rangers. Celtic just bursting to play. Two and a half weeks sidelined because of the uh, wintry weather up here over the holiday period. We can find it hard at times to training venues next step McKinley again setting off down the left Collins takes over and looks the other way Donnelly O'Donnell McNamara on the right side not the right kind of cross McLaren got the ball stuck under a foot just for a second not the longest clearance from Robertson there's a pity about the cost coming in from the right because the rest of the move was one to enjoy the super patient build up from Celtic when they had the chance to deliver well the cross wasn't a great one his boy advancing the other number two is Ian Ferguson looks day in to play with Andres Tom looks day forging on himself O'Donnell's in there, a midfield man with an eye for goal. Laudrup. He's just getting back to his best after a couple of months out earlier in the season with an ankle problem. That's that ball mark, that change of player was talking about. Well, it was not forward uh, to... Uh, <laughs> no, it's not offside. It's Oh, and Mackay could have put that into his own goal. Well, the flag was up and Celtic stopped. Everyone stopped for a moment. Well, I'm not sure what happened there. You and I stopped. The Celtic players stopped. Oleg Zelenko stopped. Everyone saw the flag. Well, that would have been something that had Rangers scored there. Well, you feel in these old firm games, you're watching history in the making. Every uh, chapter in this particular story is packed with thrills and drama and a most unusual event there. Well, let's watch it again as the ball sticks. Ian Ferguson plays the ball through now. The only thing I can suggest is that Les Mottram has said that it was a deflection off the Celtic player. He made the tackle just as Ferguson played it through. But look at Solenko, he stopped. Everyone stopped. Flag went up. How that has it got in his own net? Well, I don't think Marky Mackay knows. 
Well, the linesman, Alistair Hewitt, was overruled by Les Mottram. I think Les is fortunate, the referee, because that, that would not have been a good decision. McNamara. Labrook. Oh, and Jury nipping in. Flag is up again. And Labrook not wasting any time. He's not scoring. He, he wasn't going to hesitate this time, just in case Les Mottram had played play on again, but he hadn't. Well, they're holding the line, Celtic. They're taking a chance on this offside. Well, it's working. It's good. Gordon Jury wins the ball. Celtic have got a good line. Labrook's out offside. No doubt there. I always think it's a dangerous policy holding the line that high up the pitch. Van Hoydok. Top went well with him and got a foot in. Robertson. Suspicion of uh, Donnelly jumping in to make the challenge, but Celtic were not called back by a blast on the referee's whistle. side that wasn't given and he, did you notice he played the ball forward for Solenko down the left hand side inside left Ian channel? Ferguson correct from the right back area correct <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was saying about he's, he's so keen to get involved in the game he's taken himself everywhere well, you can imagine if Rangers lost possession quickly and Celtic then transferred the ball to this near side Petric takes the free kick <laughs> followed me underneath it was Boyd Collins, who's been uh, such a mainstay of Craig Brown's Scotland team. Next day, Thomas had a lively start to the game, but he couldn't quite reposition them. The problem that the Celtic midfield three are given Ian Ferguson is they are three against two if he stays wide. Paul Gascoigne and Charlie Miller have Paul McStay, Phil O'Donnell, and John Collins to mark. And Ian Ferguson, I think, feels it's his job to tuck in. Boyd on Robertson. The book is out. Well, he's let a few go away, watch him. I don't think that tackle from Tom Boyd is any worse than any that have gone previously. But what, 15 minutes into the game, he probably feels well. Now's the time. Tom Boyd is booked. Solenko has made space for himself and the danger was recognised just in time by O'Donnell. Good play from Phil O'Donnell, how important it was that he checked back in. Very good given against Goff. Both managers act with great dignity in this uh, football crazy city. Tommy Burns, Celtic through and through. Miller losing out to McStay. Trying to give Gascoigne a taste of his own medicine and he ran away from Gascoigne but... The Rangers man was aware that Robertson was there to make the challenge. Just two or three times though the balls were played into Charlie Miller with his back to play. And he's been just a little bit slow and getting caught in possession. Well, these are always uh, tremendous occasions. But the backdrop of that stand on the far side is just adding to it and the acoustics are splendid. But nothing between the sides at the moment for all the early endeavour. And the tigerishness of the tackling. Ferguson losing out. O'Donnell takes it on. Celtic have got a lot of players forward. And Tom, great stop by Gorham. Breaks for Donnelly to play it back in again. I'll think twice about doing it. 
and they delayed too long now once again Rangers are grateful to a fine fine save from the goalkeeper that was a magnificent stop to what was a flowing Celtic move great run from Tom great ball from McDonnell after that piercing run and you thought this is it first goal in the match but Andy Gorham had other ideas Goff but no uh, control in the pass went straight to McNamara McStay McLaren stopping it getting through to Van Hoyden Solanka Mackay sends it over the top Well, it gives you a chance to admire that. Again, O'Donnell makes this run. Now, just watch Tom make this run in between players here. Makes a wonderful run. There it goes. And the ball's just about to be slid in through there. He's onside. You can see that quite clearly. Look how quickly Gorham's off his line. Spreads himself so well. He makes an excellent save. Gordon Marshall. Pressed by Gordon Durrett. Well, there's been precious little old firm joy for Celtic so far this season, though they played a full part in that uh, remarkable 3 3 draw in November at Ibrox. In recent times, playing at home hasn't been a great advantage in old firm contests. going to take the free kick Rangers again waiting for Richard Goss Goss free offside Salenko's offside Matt the flag's up he won't be happy with his teammate Salenko drifted into an offside position total lack of concentration you watch him here there he goes he's in the air he's in that offside position the flag's up and I think Salenko's a happy man that Gordon Marshall makes an equally good save from Richard Goff's header because I don't think his captain would have been pleased about that just not thinking is he Ukrainian? what is he Mark? Solenko was he from? well he got his goals for Russia, Russia. in the uh, World Cup Petric playing safe most famous five goals for the World Cup record some talk that he might be uh, leaving Rangers who have a, a Brazilian on the verge of being signed Jardel and reports that Bobby Robson in Portugal is interested in Oleg Solenko who had a good uh, time in Spain with Valencia the rain continues to fall but It is not interrupting the momentum of another mega contest here. 20 minutes gone. But, but for Andy Gorham, Andreas Tom would have given Celtic the lead. And another Celtic move that originated down their left-hand side. O'Donnell moving infield after Ferguson had had a problem to put Tom through. who's kept Hacky Bonner out this season next day Mackay who started life working in a bank playing part time but he'll be hoping he doesn't have to go back to that to profession for a while
Ferguson going with him and fouling him. And they're still trying to get Tosh McKinley in here, but what Rangers have done, they've called on Gordon Jury to take that responsibility. I don't think Celtic will be too disappointed with that. They'd much rather see Jury in the right back position than up front, popping shots at goal. Petric brought down O'Donnell. Celtic have a free kick within range of Gordon's goal. Coming up to the halfway mark in the first half. Collins takes it, can't bypass the wall, and the player who gave away the free kick stopped it. Ladrup, he's leaving Celtic in his wake. Brian Ladrup in the end under pressure. Uh, top the point. finish to go with the fantastic ambition in the run. I thought he was away. When he gets past Boyd, just about the halfway line here, just as he slips, I thought he was going to go away from him. But I have to give Tom Boyd credit. Look at the way he caught up Loudrop. And I think that's what made him take the shot earlier. I think he would have loved to have driven into the box. He should have driven into the box. But he wasn't able to because Tom Boyd was threatening him all the time and made him take the shot earlier than he wanted. Loudrop's only league goal this season came against Celtic in the 3-3 draw. Recently voted yet again Denmark's footballer of a particular year. He has been saying that he'd like to play in England before his career comes to a conclusion. Boyd's mistake. Well, he had a ball on Gordon Jury. As soon as he picked it up, all legs are was trying to have a word with him. Because he had a great opportunity just to slide him through, straight through the middle. He elected to run with the ball. One of Celtic's most famous fans, Rod Stewart. Of uh, musical fame. Who would... Uh, Love to have been a footballer as well, and is still playing the game at his age, and has got his own pitch to play on. Presumably his own ball as well. Played a few, but it looks like things beforehand. Getting, if you missed our feature pre-game, getting some uh, coaching from Dean Holdsworth these days. That's Brian Lowry for me, the way somebody fizzes a ball at him, and his control's just instant, and he's past McKinley, all he can do is haul the Dane back, and no surprise that Les Modrum reaches for his boot. Second caution for a Celtic defender, McKinley and Boyd, with their names recorded. Free kick earned by Lowry, taken by Gascoigne. has kept it in after Celtic felt that they uh, had been given a reprieve and Gascoigne put it straight out of play. Well, how uh, the coaching staff can get their message across <laughs> in this din. Beats me. Trying again. Well, his first season, last season, had a happy conclusion. Celtic winning a trophy for the first time for six years, the Scottish Cup. Boy and McKinley got a bit close to each other. And uh, Lavrick got too close to the touchline. 
the Rangers' point of view. There's as much activity goes on in the touchline in the two, in the two dugouts as there is on the pitch. There must be horse at the end of that. And for what? You can't hear a damn thing. <laughs> Robertson. Well, you've been involved in these games as a player, Andy. Is there any need for managers to speak to the players before the game? Before the game, yeah. not to wind them up, not to get them going. I think there's an example, Walter, I think, has experienced many, many of these when it was Graham Souness' assistant and now he's managed on his own right. I think he realises that you can't get any message across. You see all that's got to be said beforehand. And then change one or two things at half-time if need be. But I agreed with the boys in the studio beforehand when he talked about two players at Celtic would miss John Hughes and Peter Grant. I think they're built for this type of game. They're made for this type of game. Yes, they're both suspended. This is Miller. Well, on both sides at the moment, the uh, pitch was a bit narrow for the players. But it's hard to find room when players are covering the ground so urgently to make the challenges. Tidiest piece of defending he'll ever come up with. Two Celtic players going for the same ball. And Hoydock's head up. And uh, Solanka actually got caught by a Celtic leg as the ball was cleared a moment or two ago, taking the wind out of his sails temporarily. had the scamper to get there first McKinley it's static uh, ahead of him for a moment but uh, they tried to work the left hand side and they've done it again Collins back to McKinley and all David Robertson can do is play safe and can save the corner wasn't a bad ball but this has been the area that's been Celtic's profitable area in the first half the opening half uh, this near side the left side McKinley and Collins in tandem together it was super play from John Collins, who he held off Gascoigne and then just popped a super pass off to Tosh McKinley. And Gorham has to save right on the line from Van Hoydock. Well, I think he was happy that this header just drops. No real power in it, and that's the thing that helps Andy Gorham. Van Hoydock goes in, gets the header, but can only just drop it down. In front of the goalkeeper, look at that, look at the amount of contact that's going on there with Petric. Donnelly. Well, it was the ball that caused Richard Goff all sorts of alarm. He felt he had to play it, Van Hoydock was coming in alongside him. He did have to play it, it's as simple as that. You can't leave this for your goalkeeper. If he did, Van Hoydock would have given Celtic the lead. The side, second in the table, pressing the league leaders. Let's not forget the context of this clash. Collins takes. Jury, Solanka. Laudrup, who's got the perfect equipment for the counter-attack. Solanka and McKinley has to cook it away. It doesn't get very far. <laughs> well, despite that calm air <laughs> we brought you a few moments ago, <laughs> Walter Smith could not control his emotions from the higher vantage point. That was a silly free kick for Tosh McKinley to give away. Ian Ferguson was going nowhere, he had him faced away from his goal, and all he's done is invite pressure on his defence.
Petrovic. Servant's going to throw it. Not totally happy with what he's doing, the Rangers manager. Goff, though, with a biting flick. Turi. That was a potentially damaging clash. McNamara fell by Mackay, his teammate, incidentally. It was an upfield as well. Well, McNamara's got eyes on the ball. Both have to be fair, but McNamara's going to head it. Mackay's going to follow it. There's only one winner in winning the ball. And there's only one person going to come off second best. And that was Jackie McNamara. Well, there are enough ways to get bruised in this match without that happening. It is an exhausting encounter, and that's just when you're watching. championship again they've not done it since 1988 they've not won the new year old firm derby since 1988 two goals from frank mcaveni eight years ago i think paul mcsee's asking is that tackles no worse than the one tom boyd was booked for and i think that's what paul mcsee's probably saying to les motto McDonald's always ahead of Ian Ferguson, always winning the ball. Collins takes. And Hoydon coming in. O'Donnell is there. Knocked away by Miller. The jury. That was nicely done. Solenko was offside. Had the ball got beyond Boyd. Next football for you on Sky Sports involving the FA Cup this weekend. On Saturday, extended highlights of Manchester United against Sunderland at 6 o'clock. And our live game on Sunday, we start at midday, Derby County against Leeds United. Third round of the FA Cup. I have a funny feeling this will be a good thing. I don't think there's any escape for David Robertson. Paul McSee does really well, just nips it past him. Completely fools David Robertson. It's going on for four years ago that Robertson was sent off in an old firm clash in the Scottish Cup. But it's yellow, not red here tonight. It's won by Ferguson, helped on by Jury. Petrich. They couldn't get that. Pass from Miller, Loudrup against Boyd. Donnelly trying to give him some help, but Boyd didn't need any help. Oh, 
Hoyt again. Tom Van Hoydok. Wanting support infield through the centre, and it wasn't quite where Van Hoydok played the ball. Again, that was a pity. It was a great run from Tom Boyd. After taking the ball off of Brian Lowdock, really deep in his own half. He wasn't happy just to pop it off and stop. Carried on with the move. Rangers have lost sight of Andreas Tom for a moment. Donnelly trying to get it back to Collins. Some uh, tidy play in there by Ferguson. I think they've been a little unlucky in the last couple of minutes, so they two good attacks. And the one thing that let them down was just lack of bodies. As Andreas Tom went to cross the ball only, Van Hoydonk and Donnelly have managed to get themselves in advanced positions. As you see here, as they pop it off, now he's got a great position. But look how many blue shots compared to green and white. Totally outnumbered. It was always difficult for Tom to pick out someone who would be free. Conspicuous. Tom. Here's Donnelly. Tom. Now Celtic, as you would expect, forcing the play. Theirs is the greater need for the extra points tonight. I think they've had the better of the opening Celtic. Certainly the possession shows that. But look how deep Gordon Jury is. Who's that heading the ball out from the right back position? It's the Rangers striker. The guy picked the play up front. I think Tommy Burns will be quite happy to see that. So if Gordon Jury's that deep, he ain't going to score a goal. That's a certainty. Let's stay. Let's go. Tried to slide it into the centre midfield where Ian Ferguson is definitely deployed now. And Jury in the right back area again as Celtic build down the Rangers left or try to. McLaren across to clear. And Jury's looking at the bench and gesticulating as if uh, he's taking up your point, Andy, as to what am I doing here? I've got us. I've got this sympathy with him. But there's a problem. It's been a problem I've noticed since the opening minutes. And one that's got to be addressed, they just can't allow them to run free into that. The only other thing you can do is say to Brian Waldrop, you come and play this side. And play from there. But I think it's something that they will certainly be talking about in the dressing room at half time. But there's a big five minutes coming up. Celtic have got a good head of steam up. And they'll be anxious to try and nick one in the next five minutes. Rangers, on the other hand, will be keen to get a half time level. They've been saying about Celtic, they don't win the derbies when it really matters. Well, this one really does matter. They're piling in now. And Van Hoydonk, the object of the Rangers' wrath. Petric on uh, the ground, I think it was, who kicked out. Well, they're having a right tussle. Van Hoydonk and Petric, when there any crosses coming into the box. Look at... Gordon Petric, when he gets the grip of Van Hoydonk, all the time it's coming, and he's really taking a chance, you can see the wild kick there, and it's just as well for him that Les Mottram didn't see that, but he's taking a chance because he isn't half getting a grip of Van Hoydonk's jersey every time the ball's coming in, the referee sees that, well... He's got a lot of weight and height to throw around Van Hoydonk. Sometimes you feel he doesn't do that. And here's Solenko trying to run past Boyd, who concedes the corner. Again, there was a glorious opportunity for him just to roll Charlie Miller in. He broke from midfield. And two or three times when Rangers have had the opportunity to play passes, players have run with the ball. Well, Rangers have broken free momentarily from the pressure. Gascoigne's corner. Been knocked by Tom. Patrick though. Gets it back towards Jury. 
Seven is Miller. Solanka tried to uh, just touch it off the gas and it went the other way. And uh, well offside, Van Hoydok. Petric. Gascoigne. And it's beautifully done. Can't quite say the same about Ferguson's attempt to play it. It's a Rangers advantage further forward. Three minutes plus stoppage time left in the first half. Rangers have struggled really to make much impact in the last third. The choice of ball, a lack of ball, has let them down in the first half. Celtic have looked much more dangerous in the attacking thirds. McNamara nipping in. Tussle with Gascoigne. Fuel the flames of anger in the crowd. And now Petric and Van Hoydok. Well, this is really going to require some action from the referee. Well, I thought this was the other way. Petric attracts him and then the arm goes out. I think that's the free kick. And there's not an awful lot happens after that. Van Hoydok does nothing wrong for me. Petric runs the ball out of play. That's either a free kick or a throw into Celtic. But Rangers get the decision. And Van Hoydok gets the lecture when Petric really looked the culprit as he was a few minutes ago in the penalty area when he kicked out. There's Mottram, the Scotland's refereeing representative in the last World Cup, of course. Petric takes the free kick. Jury shot. Now, well, he was never in a position for me to get that shot. Enough power, enough control, it was far too high. Had other options on. But again, the thing that's let Rangers down has been their choice in the last third. As the ball just drops down, it's far too high. Look at the top of the screen. You pick out Salenko, you can pick out David Robertson. They opted for the most difficult thing. But I suppose in the back of a four-goal haul in the, your last game, you are going to take a chance and shoot. Well, as they line up Rangers uh, at the restart, Ian Ferguson has switched back, Gordon Jury is through the centre again. Of course, one option we haven't mentioned, uh, and is Alec Clellan, the substitute. I could get him on and play him in his natural position. Next day. Now top. He's lost it to Gascoigne. Celtic having to play a bit on the retreat. Hasn't happened too often. They've got the ball again at the free kick as we go into stoppage time. a big night as a barometer of Celtic's improvement this season. The league table shows that they are better, but are they good enough to dethrone the champions who have had the title seven times in a row? Celtic so proud that they're the club who've won it nine times in succession in the past, in the uh, 60s and 70s. Thanks to him already into the apology. But it's not going to be enough. Well, he's been uh, determined to curb his bookings for descent. But uh, midfield men are expected to tackle. And if you get it wrong these days, you run the risk of getting booked. He has been booked. Well, I had a lot of sympathy, as most other people were, booking against Hibs at the weekend. But, uh, well, you can't argue with that one. Area. Well, that came back 
to McLaren and Gorham was worried about handling it and giving away a free kick. There have been a lot of free kicks in this first half. Rangers think it's been taken. Loudrup thinks it's been retaken. Marshall had to make a save, but it's all irrelevant. We'll have to go back to where the referee is standing. Quite rightly too. It was taken about 15, 20 yards away from the incident. Well, if he's blown his whistle, there's more trouble. You're not going to hear it if you're five yards away from him. Never mind 50. But what about Andy Gordon there when he had to deal with that back pass? What a cool head he showed to take it on his chest and volley it when he was under severe pressure. There's a cool chest and a clear head to recognise the threat. It's nil-nil at half-time. Gorham has played well. Celtic have forced the pace of the game. Plenty of stoppages. But Rangers, the league leaders, haven't conceded a goal to the side standing second at half-time at Celtic Park. It's Celtic nil, Rangers nil. Welcome back to Parkhead. No goals at half-time, but it's had everything else. Five attempts from Celtic, three on target. Rangers haven't been on target yet, just three attempts. Five corners between them, three for Rangers. Four bookings between them, Boyd and McKinley from Celtic, Robertson and Gascoigne from Rangers. Oh, it's been tight. But Celtic have had 59% of the possession look, tremendous amount. The ball in play, 26 minutes from nearly 48. Charlie Nicholas and Mark Haitley are our guests here tonight. Have you enjoyed it, Charlie, so far? Yes, I have. It's another typical Celtic Rangers derby. Plenty of passion. Not a lot of great passing movements, to be honest. We've seen some nice skills from Loudrop at times, but uh, lots of passion, lots of incident. You think Rangers will be the happier that half-time has come, Mark? I think so. I mean, they've been both ends, I mean, they've had clear, clear chances as such. A few dodgy offside decisions, but uh, <laughs> slightly, slightly, decisions. Yeah, slightly. But uh, as you say, plenty of passion, plenty of incident. You know, a lot, lot of, lot of things for people to talk about at half time. Really, is a wonderful night for it as well, isn't it? And driving rain has made a very slippery surface. That ball being slicked around. Early opportunities for Celtic. Andreas Tom was in on a couple of occasions. How good a chance was this, Charlie, when he came stealing this, in here? This is a great chance for a striker to go and attack yeah. it. Andy Gray was mentioning that Celtic put most of the joy down the left-hand side. It's a great cross, it's inviting you to go and put your head on it and make yourself a bit of a hero. Yeah. And uh, I think that's where you can see Andy Tom struggles to get a lot of goals. You know, he's more a creator than a finisher, but it was a tremendous cross. And he had another opportunity shortly after that, when Andy Gorham was forced into making a very good save. Time and again, the keeper has done that down the years for Rangers, Mark, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, he stays big all the time. It's, you know, it's... Uh a trait of Andy, he makes himself big, he's a big chap anyway, but he doesn't go down, he stays, he, you know, he does what Schmeichel does a lot, he comes out forward, where, you know, a lot of goalkeepers yeah. come out and they're going backwards all the time. Yeah. It makes you make the decision, I think yeah. that, that becomes a problem when you're a forward. I mean, the run's great, isn't Yeah, it? the great, great, the great ball, great. everything. It's a lovely way yeah. to pass. You see him going standing up here. Look, it's he's coming forward, his weight's going decision. forward. Okay. Yeah. Great side. And Rangers really have been restricted to trying to break from situations where they've been under pressure. And, and when that's happened, Brian Loudrup has been the man in the main. Yeah, and, and just for a moment here, Mark, and, and, the, and most, I think most of the rest of us thought he was away, but he got caught, didn't he? Yeah, we thought it was going to be a, a carbon copy of the goal he scored here last year, was it last year? Hamden, Hamden yeah, last year. Hamden last year. I mean, well, we was remarking that, you know, boy, did remarkably well to get back. It's the first time I've seen somebody catch Brian when he's been with the ball at his feet and running towards goal. I think, Mark, that's probably the, the reason why he's been injured, just taking the time to come back yeah. in now, Loudrop. Absolutely. I think you've seen in the last five yards, we're all surprised that he got caught. Yeah, it was... Goalless so far. We know that Rod Stewart's in the crowd. We spoke to him a little earlier. Let's get his uh, half-time thoughts. He's with Davey Provin. Rod, you've come a long way to watch Celtic tonight. How do you think they're doing so far? Well, it's, it's not a great game of football, but it's uh, a wonderful spectacle, and uh, I think if they score first, they're going to win. The last, time, the last time you were here was back in August for the friendly against Newcastle United. A different atmosphere in the stadium tonight? 
Oh, it's 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 electric. I mean, uh, the songs that are sung. I mean, every time I come up here, there's a new song, and that's what makes this game so totally original, so magic. Dean Holdsworth, it's your first Glasgow derby. I understand. What do you make of it? Yeah, it's fascinating atmosphere, and uh, there's a lot of tackles flying in, and I think so. It got a little bit un, you know, unfortunate to be uh, not to be a goal up really. I understand you come up here in a bit of style today. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, I've come up come with a man here, and uh, he brought me up today, and uh, we've had a fantastic journey up in the plane and stuff like that, and great atmosphere as we come, and uh, it wasn't too hard to tell who the legend was up here, it wasn't me anyway. Rod, give us a prediction for the second half. Oh, I can't do that. I think, as I said, whoever scores the first goal, uh, whether it be Rangers or Celtic, it could be all over. It's, it's that tight, and as I said, it's not a great game of football, but it's so exciting. It's, it's tremendous. I wish you were all here. With us. Anyway, lads, listen, thanks for joining us. Enjoy the second half. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, it wasn't just any old plane. It was Rod Stewart's plane. That's the way to arrive for a football match. No goals yet. A little bit like that Coca-Cola Cup game here when Rangers stole it later on. Is that likely to happen again? More in a moment. Here tonight, Celtic nil, Rangers nil at half time. Celtic with so much possession, can't find a way through yet. Coming up at the weekend, six o'clock on Saturday, extended highlights of the FA Cup third round tie between Manchester United and Sunderland. And we're live at the baseball ground on Sunday at 12, Derby County against Leeds United. And Monday night at seven, Bank of Scotland for Hibs, who are third right now, against Aberdeen. Coca-Cola Cup winners in Scotland a few weeks back. Charlie Nicholas and Mark Haley are with us tonight. I was saying, Charlie, you and I watched that Coca-Cola Cup tie here, when again Celtic had so much possession and couldn't find a way through. Ali McCoist, who's on the bench, but he's 5-1, incidentally, for the opening goal, settled it that night. Is it again a stage that he could come on and... Uh, your winner from? Well, it would be so typical of Ali to, to come on and do that type of thing. He's done it to Celtic so much in the past. But uh, this is a very similar match. Celtic, loads of possession. To be fair, have made better chances tonight than they did that evening. But uh, Rangers still look dangerous to me. On the break, particularly, yeah? On, particularly when Loudrop has the ball, yes. Well, when you look at that possession mark of your Rangers, you've got to half time, nil nil, without too many serious scares. You're not that unhappy, are you? No, I think you can play away from home, whatever game it is, you go in at nil-nil, you're, you're happy. You go down and you have a sit down and, you know, talk about a few things and, you know, hopefully be sorting that little problem out at the, uh, the right right back position. Well, a draw at the end of the day is a great result for them as well, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, Celtic ideally need to win the game tonight. And it's as simple as that. So how do they convert the possession into goals, Charlie? Well, again, I think down the left hand side have been prominent, but I'd like to see Tom in particular get in behind the Rangers back three. We can get him behind them, and I think we can cause them problems. But uh, if we just play in front of them, Rangers will soak that up and hit them on the break. Fabulous atmosphere in here, really is. A New Year's old firm derby between Celtic and Rangers, live on Sky Sports tonight. Goalless at half time. Let's rejoin Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thank you very much, Richard. Nil nil. Both sides level in that they've lost only one league game all season long Celtics one defeat here two Rangers of course back in September the champions had their colours lowered for the only time in the league a week earlier beaten at home by Hibs well they certainly got their revenge for that last Saturday but we've seen very little of that attacking panache from Walter Smith's side to this point Celtic start the second half. Well, no changes in personnel, but I feel sure that in the Rangers dressing room there was an awful lot of talk of the right-hand side, the side that Josh McKinley enjoyed a lot of success first half. They must have talked about doing something to solve the problems. McLaren's back pass. Gorham, who's certainly been back to his very best this season. He's had a lot of injury problems over the last couple of years, of course. Here's David Robertson. Oh, 
Well, Malky Mackay certainly hasn't looked out of place in this company. Donnelly doing well. There's no one uh, really helping him to the left. Coming from a deeper position was the willing O'Donnell. McNamara outside him. O'Donnell goes for glory himself. Touch onto the post. Well, what a save again from Andy Gordo. Well, that was just typical Phil O'Donnell. O'Donnell again. It's as close as Celtic have come. What a run, though, he puts in here, O'Donnell. Drives that range of set of defenders. And Andy Gore, make no mistake, he gets fingertips to that. If he doesn't, the Rangers are one down. It's a magnificent save from the Rangers goalkeeper to deny Phil O'Donnell the opening goal. Collins and Collins is taking him infield from time to time. Louder. Robertson. Boy showing his athleticism again, but he didn't deal with the ball. Now comes Marshall. That was a decent run. Loudrup and Robertson for one of the few times in the match. Combining well down the left side. Selenko to move to. Selenko's header is a shrewd one. Miller. And Mackay stood his ground again. Well, here are Rangers. Eight points clear at the top of the table. And uh, I saw a survey amongst their players that was published the holiday period. Who was the best player? up to this point so far and Andy Gorham got the vote so in those circumstances you can uh, see what a contribution he's made so often in games not like this one but games where Rangers have the ball for long periods and maybe has to make one save at a crucial time in a match and he invariably comes up with it Miller's well, pass he's made two now Mark in a very important game for Rangers not the tallest of goalkeepers either but he did manage to get that frame of his stretched to its maximum to get the weirdest fingertip touch on it dare I say that he learned his trade in England <laughs> <laughs> here's top maybe more work for Andy Gorham Donnelly and he's penalised for it but Phil O'Donnell who loves to drive on from midfield in the manner in which his shot is turned on to the post by the excellent Gorham Collins and once again sorry Matt once again I have to see Celtic calling the tune at the beginning of the second half they've been sound at the back they've been inventive in midfield and they've looked threatening up front but they haven't scored and you and I have now covered maybe half a dozen, eight of these old firm derby matches. And an awful lot of them have followed these lines when Celtic, in my opinion, have been the better side for huge spells in the game. But haven't managed to get a goal when they've been playing well. Donnelly. Donnelly again. McLaren. Wasn't the most authoritative clearance. Donnelly alive to the prospects at the throw from Collins. 
Gascoigne in the work. McStay taking over. It's a good play by Ferguson, but Rangers have lost it again. Collins. Nothing wrong with that, says Les Mottram. But there is with that. Free kick to Loudrup and Rangers. Robertson has tried to show adventure down the left. It's certainly a strong suit for him, and the system is tailored for him to push on. But <laughs> where's the man on the right? Not there for Loudrup. Here's Robertson well forward. Solenko. Rangers back pedal. Collins. Into Donnelly. Tom to the left. Van Hoedon through the middle. Donnelly claims a free kick and gets one. Well, I thought he was running out of steam, Simon Donnelly there, he was running out of ideas. He was looking to play Pierre Van Hooydonk in here. I wouldn't see Charlie Miller do too much wrong there. Except put him under a bit of pressure, but the free kick's been given. And I don't imagine you pull your centre forward out of the firing line to a free kick 30 yards from goal if he ain't going to hit it. But you never know, it might be a decoy. It's not, it's Van Hooydonk! And the forum uh, in this sort of form, he needs to do just a bit more than that. It wasn't a bad try. Well, it's hit with plenty of power and it's hit with plenty of pace. But it's from so far out that Andy Gorham gets a good long look at it. Look at that. Good long look at it. And it's quite a comfortable save. You know, ten yards nearer, it may well have been a different matter. Petrich. crowd trying to influence the linesman but the flag stayed down Miller letting it run but Solenko wasn't quite behind him and Hoydonk was waiting McLaren wasn't, Gascoigne Solenko still Solenko Marshall shows his calibre in the Celtic goal but Gascoigne to the right court Solenko, I think he feels he's Provided him with the best chance Rangers have created today. I thought when he tucked inside here he was going to hit it. But he elected to come back on his left. And I tell you, we've talked about Andy Gorham making important saves. That's a hell of a big save from Gordon Marshall. Stood big, didn't commit himself, didn't go to ground early. And was able to make himself a big target. And Salenko found him. Gordon Marshall a long time ago failed to make the grade with Rangers. Crowd not happy with uh, the decision against O'Donnell. But there's that warning to Celtic. And they've seen it happen to them so often that going down to the sucker punch late on when they've dominated matches, most notably in recent times in that League Cup fourth round match back in September. And a certain Alastair McCoist was responsible for their gloom. Haven't seen him yet tonight, but he's av available on the bench. Petric. Gascoigne made it his. Ferguson. Away, thoughtfully by Mackay. To Tom. Celtic trying to catch up with him in the shape of O'Donnell. And McKinley down the left. Tom can leave it to the left back. Now it is Andreas top. Oh, Van Hooydonk! Without any touch and he scores. It was a brilliant run from Van Hooydonk and a great ball from Tom. It deserved better. It was a super break. Now watch it run. It's a beautifully dank cross. Without any touch and he scores. I don't know whether he does. It looks like he misses it totally. He does. And look how close this is to dropping in at the far post. It's a foot away. 
And that's a real let off for Rangers. And another chance goes begging for Celtic. Any touch and it's in at that back post. Well, he's got a good record in the big games, Van Hoydonk. He scored on his Celtic debut, scored in his first Celtic Cup tie, scored in his first Old Firm game, and of course he got the goal that won the Scottish Cup in May. They need a goal from him tonight, or from someone, to peg back Rangers. The status quo would suit Walter Smith if it finished level tonight, much more than Tommy Burns. Day. Tom. Here's Collins. Donnelly's taken up an interesting position. He didn't want to shoot. Trying with that angle, it would have to be a pass of rare precision to get it into the area that uh, O'Donnell was running towards. Just talking, we see that Tommy Burns here saying wide, and he did have a run at Jackie McNamara provided him with the option wide on the right that was certainly the ball Fury Gordon Fury has been out of Scotland's plans for a while but he's certainly attracting uh, the attention of Craig Brown with his goal scoring feats in recent weeks Tomorrow with the throw. Goff, whose international days seem to be well and truly over. Although he's still such a strong leader for his club. Gascoigne, cleverly wide to Robertson. Thank you, blue jerseys forward. and he loves to take them on in these circumstances and the pass was a very perceptive one but Solenko, who was on the same wavelength it was offside I don't know how much he thinks about it all right Solenko at times when he gets in these advanced areas at times he just he just drifts offside needlessly you know he's looking at two Celtic players in front of him no reason for him to be in advance of them Keepers have done their bit so far in this New Year's Old Firm derby. But Gorham might be threatened again by Tom. There was uh, no return pass on. Donnelly hadn't quite seen the opportunity to really accelerate. And there were a lot of Rangers players around him, perhaps barring the way. The majority Ferguson. of the game, Rangers have done that quite well. They've got plenty of blue jerseys back when they need them. Well, the pass from Miller and uh, Jury trying to use his well-documented pace. And Mackay was very capable in his defending again. It's O'Donnell. Well, he's the problem. That's what Phil O'Donnell's all about, my opinion. I saw this lad play at Motherwell many years ago. It was a flick by Gascoigne and a problem for Celtic in the shape of Brian Laudrup and once more the attentions of Tom Boyd enough to put him off at the critical moment. And once again that lack of fitness that Charlie Nicholas talked about at halftime possibly showing there. The game spread over the last few seconds. And Hoydock leaving it for Tosh McKinley. On influence by Goff, unflappable. Jury. Chance to attack Celtic again. And stay covering a lot of ground to get to it. And O'Donnell. Here's Collins having a good look around to see what's on. Now that's really stretched now. You talked about it a moment ago. Again, stretched over 60 yards of the pitch now. Van Hoydock. Here's McKinley. Trying to get past Petrich, who's uh, quite a master of the handoff. Well, if 
thought it was passing for a moment here. But again, that left arm of Gordon. Petrich comes out. I think the referee wasn't at the best angle to see that. But it looks like they've just decided they're both going to slug it out now. Well, as we saw at this stage in the West London derby last night, the game's here for the winning. At this point, with an hour and a little bit more gone. Plough through Gascoigne, that takes a bit of doing. That goes up against Solanco, the linesman on the far side is uh, having quite a busy spell. Alan Granger. Collins has Celtic tried to call the tune again with McKinley. Now scooped behind by Robertson. Conversation in the middle between O'Donnell and Van Hoydon. Maybe about positioning at this corner. Gascoy. Loudrup. Well, it's territory that he loves to explore, particularly on the counter attack, but Celtic just aren't letting him get away. They know if he does so, could be at a heavy cost. They've played the Rangers two creative players very well tonight. Both Gascoigne and Loudrop I'm talking about. They it's haven't hit an influence again too much and for two long spells. Great ball. Hold on. Great ball. It's, uh, Craftsman John Collins. McKinley. And but it is a corner despite the efforts of Gorham to snake his arms round it in the nick of time. Well, they've got to sleep a little. And there's Mackay making his way in. on the bench. Well, I see one of the Rangers subs been called down. It will be Alec Clellan, Martin. I think it's been noticeable in the last couple of attacks that again Tosh McKinley's been able to get forward in advanced position and look to provide crosses and that may be something they're looking at. There he is. Alec Clellan, yeah. He scored here in the league game in September in that 2-0 win he got the first Gascoigne covered so much ground to round up a brilliant move for the second well, you and I were talking at half time about what you would do to, to cover this and I was saying to you well if I was Walter Smith I'd put Cleland on but it surprised me maybe to you I said I'd take Salenko off put Loudrop up front with Jury and it gives him more balance then to cope with well what's at the moment, without the goals, it's been quite a rampant Celtic. They've enjoyed lots of possession. McStay, Collins and O'Donnell have been a real threat in that midfield area. They should be surprised if Ferguson was the one to go, even though it's his sort of position that they're trying to cover. He has the fire that Rangers need in these circumstances. But we shall see.
Donnelly. Collins. Tom. Played a lot of international football, particularly uh, in the years when there was an East Germany. That's the area again, Mark. Look at Tosh McKinley. It's just a bit unfortunate. The ball from McStay had a little bit too much weight on it. But once again, Paul McStay spotted the runner, McKinley, who was once again in. Leap forward by Petric. Major Jury makes it his. But not for long, no one no. can be in possession for too long in a match of this intensity. Boy. Collins is Celtic, work it down the left again. Can be a little later on the scene this time, didn't need to be there so early with Tom Boyd involved, but look at the progress that he's made. Oh, and that was Tom, and it stayed out. Andy Gorham. but he was alert on his line and this was a great angle that McKinley got to well watch this for Steve it's just instinctive the left hand goes out and he's still alert and alive and nimble enough to deal with the rebound he couldn't come into the pack to deal with the cross I don't think but again Rangers grateful for the ability of the goalkeeper and Andy Gray called the substitution perfectly Welland for Solenko. To be fair, it's one I had to made at half time, as I said <laughs> to you. So Welland has gone in on the right hand side, as you would expect. McNamara takes the free kick. Here's Collins, capable of striking the ball uh, from that type of position towards goal, but uh, Rangers recognised that and got to him quickly. So uh, Laudrup, who's been the floater really in the earlier formation, is now uh, an out-and-out -out striker with Jury. And Ian Ferguson, as we suspected, has been kept on and has where he can apply his particular brand of fire and brimstone in the uh, centre of things, the thick of things. But they should go three for three now in the centre midfield. Collins, McStay and O'Donnell oh. against Miller, Ferguson and Gascoigne. Well, we said it once or twice in the season, possession doesn't win you football matches. We've enjoyed an awful lot of it, and we've played some lovely stuff at times, Celtic. But the most important stat of all is that one in the top left that says 0-0. Oh, Mackay was very close to the jury, and the uh, jury made enough of the contact to catch the referee's eye. Free kick with 20 minutes to go to Rangers to Gascoigne. Woo! Ferguson. Petrich to dink it forward. Goff attacking it. Trying to loop the header over the goalkeeper, who, to be fair, was pretty well positioned in the end. If it was on target, Gordon Marshall would have dealt with it, but it was a clever idea from Richard Goff. He's no stranger to finding himself in those sort of areas. needed twice McKinley Collins with a flick Celtic add to their tally of corners the Rangers have needed the three central defenders I think had they got in with the two 
the Celtic would have found the space and exploited them they've needed the three people across that 18 yard box plus a performance from their goalkeeper to keep the score line level McKinley Van Hoedon well it was uh, an intervention for the crowd were calling for as uh, a penalty but uh, the defender knew nothing about it well we certainly couldn't see from here that, whether it hits the arm whether it hits the chest certainly they were claiming for it from the opposite side of the ground they definitely had the best view over there McKinley that's going not wasting the possession precious for Rangers Jury here's Miller Ferguson can keep it going for Cleland McNamara chucked across to uh, make the block and Gascoigne who has it within his range of skills to uh, get a shot on target in those sort of circumstances from that extravagant <laughs> distance <laughs> missed extravagantly <laughs> and he's getting some very ironic homage being paid to him by those with the green and white draped all around them so that might just appeal to his uh, sense of humour on the far side to say no once again close said in the first half you're taking a chance when you do that you hold your line so high we've got the decisions at the moment but it only takes them to get it wrong once boy McNamara it's reach Van Hoydonk but stay well, he doesn't get too many goals these days. That's worth a goal. Good hold up, sets it up, and hold on. Two touches, it's there to hit first time. It was always difficult. Look at two blue jerseys right in his face. from Mackay and it's only his fourth start at this level it's played well in fact they've all played well along the back for Celtic he won't be going back to being a bank clerk for a while no. <laughs> you can bank on that <laughs> 15 minutes left what can we bank on in uh, that time still so much at stake particularly it hasn't been uh, that way for a good few years in terms of the destination of the championship. Celtic have been off the pace for too long. Desperate to get a goal here to close the gap to five points. And Tommy Burns thinking about a change to try and affect that if he can. He's calling for Brian McLaughlin. very appreciative of the effort that Simon Donnelly has put in 
now it was the last derby of last season when Brian McLaughlin led Rangers a merry dance 3-0 at Hamden and uh, in the end I think it was he who contributed to uh, Billy Thompson the Rangers goalkeeper in that game getting sent off for bringing him down bounced off Mackay seized on by Cleland Loudrup pleased to be able to make up for his own clumsiness, a rare moment of clumsiness. Well read, read the situation well. Saw Cleland's run, just covered the hole. O'Donnell. Miller trying to pull out of the challenge in the end, but he's done enough to incur the displeasure of the referee. himself that didn't cost Rangers a great deal but it might have done coming up for you at the weekend we switch our attention to the FA Cup sponsored by Little Woods highlights of Manchester United against Sunderland and other riches for you in that program starting at six and our live match on the Sunday comes from the baseball ground we begin at midday Derby County against Leeds United Derby County really bombing along in Division 1 and that could be a match and a half all the uh, meaningful efforts at goal bar Selenko's chance coming from Celtic but it's still nil-nil what the Rangers hope will be the bewitching hour the man with the Midas touch particularly in the old firm clashes Ali McCoist getting ready for a cameo appearance the scene is certainly set for him so many times the scourge of Celtic in the past He just gets it away. Petrich has a crack himself. Marshall concerned with keeping the ball in play, really. And getting it forward quickly. And uh, quite right, the referee. Van Hoydonk was looking at McLaren, not at the ball. He's got a stature about him, Les Mottram. Maybe uh, no referee is perfect, and there's bound to be the... Uh, Odd uh, situation where we can second-guess him with our replays up here. But I think the game has been grateful for his uh, authority. And it's not been easy being a referee in Scotland in recent times. McLaughlin. Gascoigne. was the flag offside jury is spinning around furiously not sure who to blame really <laughs> whether his teammate or the linesman or just life in general because there's nothing to go on the front the front few of Rangers whether it's Alain or Lauder or jury it's been Celtic pressing pressing asking all the questions Rangers defending and hoping to catch Celtic on the break Produce good crosses from when he gets in that area. It was a great ball from Andreas Tom inside Alec Cleland. And he had time and space this time. 
to look up and play a good ball in. Well, the top is back up on again. Sure, he got to it well. Miller. Come on, uh, being loose down to the number of times Brian Lander has been caught offside. He just went a fraction early. But uh, good organisation in the back line by Celtic. Rangers falling into the trap. Boyd. Next day, good pressure on Walter Smith's side. Interception in the end by Petrich. Others made it possible, really, by... Uh, Making Celtic work over hard, forced the mistake. And Hoydock, McStay. Miller losing out to McStay. Now Celtic have a chance here. And Hoydock, Jackie McNamara. McStay, mind racing. Forum standards, that's a pretty uh, routine catch. And Hoydon is going to be booked for his challenge. A frank exchange of views between the players involved. The referee not uh, bothering to uh, get involved in that. He'll wait to sort it out with a notebook. Well, as a Britain, what a course for Andy Gorham to deal with takes it quite comfortably and just gets nudged late. Seven minutes left. is a striker. Tommy Burns clearly pondering whether to involve Walker later on. Walker gets the nod in place of Andrews Tom but the Referee hadn't noticed that. The throw was taken on the far side. Jury. Well, is it going to be smash and grab from Rangers late on? They've got a corner. Now scoring, running the ball, but somewhat with the crowd, but concentrating on taking it. Petrich, well, that's a free header. Totally free header. He just steps back into an acre of space. He's about 12 yards out. He really wants to be getting that down on target. Look at the position Gordon fury has got right in front of the goalkeeper. Well, five minutes for Andy Walker to try and make himself a hero. And Hoydock, Walker's first touch, McLaughlin. Collins chasing, well unsure in his work. Gas 
Gascoigne instantly recognizing the possibilities. Just outside the area, a couple of yards. Marshall setting his wall. Celtic have brought everyone back. Gascoigne with a little bit of kidology. Marshall wondering what to expect. Oh, against the bar! Marshall had no answer. And the crossbar there came between Gascoigne and a goal and between Celtic and defeat at this late stage. Well, Gascoigne won the battle of wits with the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper gets wrong. And Gascoigne's three inches away from giving Rangers the win that they really haven't deserved. So, in the second half, both sides have been away fractionally. O'Donnell early in this half, and his effort was touched onto the post by Andy Gorham at full stretch. And poor Gascoigne's free kick, full of cunning, but not quite enough dip to make it perfect. It's a wonderful strike. Great free kick. the game quite as much as he might have hoped tonight John Collins but uh, Malky Mackay in particular will be very very pleased unless something goes awry as it can do for defenders later on just ask Queen's Park Rangers last night Namara. Walker was actually uh, unmarked inside him. McLaughlin. Walker! Well, they just dropped in behind Alan McLaren, who's getting a right rollicking from both golf and the goalkeeper. And this is what he was brought on for. Ball in from McLaughlin. And whereas Van Hoydonk didn't get enough on the cross coming from the other side, Andy Walker just gets a little too much on it. Needed a fainter header, a fainter touch to direct it across Andy Gorham. Clarence. Andy, your thoughts on the the man of this frantic match. <laughs> well, hasn't been easy. I think for Rangers, obviously, their goalkeeper has played exceptionally well. And I think, well, one of the few others that comes out with credit is the skipper, Richard Goff. I think the better performances have been from people in green and white tonight. The back four, I think, have been impeccable. All along there, McNamara, Boyd, Mackay and McKinley have all played excellently. But I just think the pick for me has been a lad I tried to sign when I was at Aston Villa's assistant manager. Midfield player, the Bills, Man of the match for me is Phil O'Donnell. Max Day. And again, Goff came out bravely and painfully. He stayed down. Lauter. Gascoigne. Let him run away from it. But uh, his concern to get the ball out of play. Uh, Ian Ferguson was acting as a nurse and doctor to... Richard Goff, but he's got to play on now, as Celtic are doing. Ferguson almost trying to commit a foul to uh, help Goff. He couldn't even do that, and Celtic with Collins. And with the centre, the late winner in the nostrils, Van Hoydonk! Well, it's a breather, but there he is. My Bell's man of the match is Philidor. He came so close. 
time very nearly up. Well, he's had a couple of headers, Pierre Van Hoydonk. And neither of them have, have had enough power to really trouble Andy Gorham. Not easy headers. He's always been under pressure. He was under pressure from McLaren. He was backing away from the ball. Difficult to get sufficient power. But this is the injury here. His golf once again fully committed. And there you see him reach for the left ankle. But he's played a captain's part today. Well, he's well into his 30s now, Richard Goff, but there's no sign of his uh, talent diminishing or his appetite for the fray, let it be said. Nice touch here. Well, the gap between two great Glaswegian rivals stays at eight points. Celtic still two games in hand. No goals, but Phil O'Donnell came so close early in the second half. Andy Gorham with a number of outstanding saves, turning that one onto a post. Paul Gascoigne in the closing minutes. A draw just as it was at Ibrox in November and indeed in the New Year's fixture last season. Both sides enjoying exceptional seasons. Big points on offer tonight. Final score, nil-nil. We'll be back after the break. Thank you, Martin. No goals then at Parkhead. So it's as it was at the top. We'll be back with Charlie Nicholas and Mark Hadley and reaction next. Well, goalless then at Parkhead tonight. Rangers will be a lot, lot happier about that than Celtic. 11 attempts each. Celtic on target with seven. Rangers three. All three in that second half. Five booked in the end, Van Hoydonk joining four from the first half, Paul Gascoigne amongst them. Possession 58% to Celtic. First half action areas were fairly even, second half, Celtic in the main pushing for what would have been a priceless winner for them. Phil O'Donnell named as the man of the match by Andy Gray, he's waiting to talk to us with Andy Gorham and they're both with Davy Proven. Phil, given Celtic's contribution to this match tonight, how disappointed are you that you've had to share the points? Yeah, it's a bit disappointing, but um, I think both teams had chances. Uh, both goalkeepers made good saves. Uh, as I said, I don't know what we're going to have to do to beat this man. That's twice he's had two great saves against us, but um, we're still in there challenging, so that was the main thing after tonight. Well, the save he had from you at the start of the second half was nothing short of magnificent. Did you feel you had scored then? Yeah, I thought I'd scored, but... Um, even when he got a touch, I thought it was going to get off the post, but it was just unfortunate. And then it felt like one of their players as well when it came back off the post. But that's football for you. Andy, is this a result that Rangers would have settled for before the game? Well, the way we've played the uh, last few games, obviously it's nice not to get beat. But at the same time, I think both teams wanted to win it, just to prove a point. Um, like you said, both of us have had saves to make with all our chances. Girls hit the bar. So I suppose it was fair in the end, but... Only one old firm match left now in the season, and that's at Ibrox. Do you feel Rangers are now in control of this championship? It's never over now, it's, it's only halfway through the season. Um, I wish it was back at Park Eddington, we've got a better record here than we have at Ibrox. But it's everything to play for now. Um, it looks like it's just the two of us, so it's, it's going to be a, a good end to the season. Phil, you haven't won the three points tonight, but you have won the Bells man of the match, and with that goes the champagne. Perhaps you'll present that, Andy? Well done, lads. Oh, he's never going to drop it there, was he? There's no chance of that after the game he's had tonight. All that possession then, Charlie. You talked about them needing to find a way through. They just couldn't Celtic, could they? No, but in fairness to Celtic, they did play well. And they did make chances tonight. But uh, Andy Gorham is just inspirational. This is O'Donnell's, the one that they were just well, talking Donald. about. Well, actually, felt he was a little bit slow to react here, Andy. But it is swerving away from him. Mm. Normally, That's he right. does parry them around the post. Uh, luck's been on his side, but it's still a, a decent save, but he had some special saves. I'm disappointed he didn't hold that, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably is. No, <laughs> only one hand. It must be nice when you know there's someone behind you there, Mark, like oh, Andy Gordon, like, so secure, yeah, isn't it? It's like you, you look at a striker, you, you think it's going to score every game. It's the, goal, the goalkeeper's the same sort of position in the team. I mean, inspiring. I mean, the goalkeeper does inspire a team like, like mm. a centre-forward does. They score in regular. And he did it again shortly mm. afterwards when I think Tom must have thought he'd scored. This one, uh, again, as Andy said, in common, no. just instinctive, but, but uh, 
Nevertheless, I mean, it's fantastic this is save. An Andy Gorham save, strong, strong hands, strong wrists. I mean, I mean, it's incredible. Great save. Yeah. It's a great reaction, Steve. It's, it's, it's a yard away, too. Yeah, it's a problem. Is Richard Goff actually gets a touch on us, I believe. And then it's still ahead of us, so he didn't get really any time to adjust. I mean, it's come fairly close at him. But still to adjust as quick as he did and then react. It's, that's a sensational save, it really is. And then Paul Gascoigne nearly stole it for Rangers with that free kick. This was a fascinating battle of wits, Mark, wasn't it, between him? Yeah, a crucial stage of the Marshall. game as well, I think about three or four minutes ago, something like that. And he's totally wrong-footed him, flat-footed. And as you say, he's three inches away from taking three points there. You call it Charlie in here. You fancied him for it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. He's, he's always capable of bringing up something different, isn't he? He's going to change something. And when you actually see Gordon Marshall's face yeah. when that free kick is going bam, yeah. he's, he thinks he's completely beat. He's out. Yeah. He's outwitted. Was there a little exchange between the two shortly afterwards as well? There's a right yeah. smile. Let him know, let him know. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful stuff it was. So nil nil, and, and Rangers will be the happier, Mark. Surely. Um, I think so. I mean, you, you come away and you, you you're playing at the nearest rival, sort of thing. So you know you'd be happy going away with the with the same margin as you as you came to the game with. The free kick, incidentally, we've just had the computers on. Let's have a look at this again. 26, just over 26 yards, mm. and didn't it curl? Not so much pace about it, but he didn't need it, Charlie, did he? No, he didn't. I think he's just completely outwitted Gordon Marshall. That's what he's went for. He's trying to bluff him for the near post, mm -hmm. and he's completely conned him. And uh, lucky enough for Celtic, he's going back off the bar. There's no chance of anybody at Rangers suggesting the title's one mark, is there? No, no they won't be saying that. Walter will be far from, from you know, that... Uh, the furthest thing from his mind now, he'll be look, just looking towards the next game and getting the next next game one, keeping everybody level-headed and you know just playing each game as it comes. But, but how does Celtic approach the season from this point? Bear well, in mind that we came into this saying they had to win it. Yeah, well, I, I, I felt they had to win it. Now the pressure swings right back in Celtic now because I've got to win the games in hand to get there. Rangers have got them in the bag. And then if Celtic slip up in even one of them games, then Rangers are, are still going to have this gap and it's, it's pressure now in Celtic. Right, back downstairs to join David Proven, who's with Walter Smith this time. Walter, Celtic haven't closed the gap at all tonight. How pleasing is that? Well, that's the most pleasing part about the performance tonight. We just worked hard tonight. I felt, you know, we've played better football in recent games than we did do tonight. But it was a tense game, very nervous game, um, as they always are. So we are the team, I think, that's maybe got the advantage in terms of not dropping any more points than we did do. And I think the draw suits us probably better than Celtic. Did you come here tonight with the intention of making sure you didn't lose? No, I don't know. that was never the intention. I have came here right enough and uh, surprising fact, we've not lost a goal in three games here. So that was pleasing, but uh, when you look at the performance of Richard Goff in the middle of the defence, well, you know, you look at the answer to that one. So I think that, uh, you know, we're pleased with the point and it keeps us top of the league and it puts a little bit more pressure on Celtic's two games in hand now where, you know, they must go and win them. Did you feel you had snatched the game at the death when Paul Gascoigne hit the bar with the free kick? Well, it was one of these games where I felt we had a few opportunities in the game to maybe play the ball through better than we did. And I felt that, you know, the through runner might have caused a wee bit more problem than it ended up doing. But when uh, Paul gets opportunities up and around the box, I wasn't surprised when it happened. And uh, just a wee bit unfortunate, it didn't go under the bar. That's 17 games now, 17 league games without defeat for Rangers. Do you feel now that you have a real momentum going? Well, we, we do feel we've got that momentum going. I'm disappointed a wee bit the way we play tonight. I feel we can play better football than we did this evening. But in saying that, you know, Celtic's motivation to stop Rangers winning the championship is always going to be a great thing. And, uh, you know, they're up for the game tonight and uh, made it very difficult for us to play in a manner in which we have been doing. Thanks, Walter. Thanks, David. OK, the Bells Scottish Premier. Let's have a look. Bottom to top, Falkirk, Motherwell, Party Thistle, Kilmarnock, Hearts, Wraith Rovers, Aberdeen, Hibs. Those two meet next Monday. Actually, Hibs against Aberdeen, Easter Road, and the top two, Celtic and Rangers. Eight points the gap. Celtic have two games in hand. As Charlie was saying, that puts added pressure on those two games. They've got to win those to get closer. Have to get closer. Now then, it's not uh, Rangers for Mark Hately these days. Of course, it is Queen's Park Rangers. How's the fitness, Mark? Oh, it's not bad. Um, I'm actually suffering. I broke my nose quite badly against uh, um, Aston Villa. That's how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, I'm having a few problems breathing. I've had a bit of a virus as well, which, is, which has set me back a little bit. But 
and I'm trying to get my nose sorted and uh, get back into it. Major blow, of course, for Queen's Park Rangers last night. We saw that one live. Have you, have you been in? Was there any way? Yeah, well, there was, everybody was disappointed. I mean, it's a young team uh, and they battle away well. Um, and as Ray said, I mean, you've got to get the young, the young lads to keep their heads up. I mean, they, they played well. I thought they deserved more than they got out of the game. Um, but that's the way you go when you're at the bottom of the table. You, 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 you get kicked in the teeth and it, you just have to get everybody's heads up. And, you know, if, if it's got to start the next game, how we finish that one, you know, with, with the commitment and the belief. OK, well, just before we leave Scotland, let's get back to uh, Tommy Burns, who's with Davey. Tommy, do you feel that's a Celtic performance that might have earned you more? Oh, well, I think that, Davey. I think, you know, we asked the boys before the, the game tonight to go and, and push themselves a wee bit further than what they have been doing recently. And I think, to be fair to them, you know, they've, they've dominated the game uh, against a very good side. Uh, we've come off 18 days of rest, and the players have been out there. You know, they've dominated the game, they've put Rangers under pressure at every opportunity. We've played a lot of good football, uh, and Andy Goldman made some remarkable saves. But uh, I can't fault any Celtic player tonight. I thought they were absolutely magnificent. Uh, we're single out our goalkeeper, Gordon Marshall, in particular, who had two, two days of sickness and diarrhoea, but, but desperate to play. So we've got to take our hat, our hat off to him. But to, uh, over the piece, well, I'm very, very pleased with the, the performance, the way the guys went about their business. Uh, and we come away tonight still very much in contention, and that's what it's all about for us. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you, Davey. Yes, Davey, thanks very much. Uh, thank you again, Mark Haitley. Good luck for the rest of the season at Loftus Road there. Always a pleasure to see Charlie Nicholas. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. <laughs> Great. OK, coming up on Sky Sports, we've got the Sky Sports Centre next, all the day's sports stories, followed by Eddie and Steve-O with boots and all. And over on Sky Sports Gold at half past ten, World Cup Classics. FA Cup special this coming Saturday at 6. Third round extended highlights from Old Trafford. Manchester United against Sunderland. Highlights from elsewhere up and down the country as well. And on Sunday at 12, we're off to the baseball ground. Dave Mackay and Norman Hunter will be with us as Derby County, top of the first division, go in against Leeds United. That's Sunday at 12. And on Monday night, as I was saying, Easter Road, it's Hibs against Aberdeen from the Bells Scottish Premier. Third and fourth right now. Aberdeen, of course, recently won the Coca-Cola Cup here. But at Parkhead tonight, we came into this match with the expectation, or certainly Celtic did, of a win. They had to win, we felt. Haven't done that. Celtic have preserved, Rangers rather, have preserved the status quo at the top. Still eight points the gap, although Celtic, of course, do have those two games in hand. Hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a busy start to the new year. It's FA Cup action up next at the weekend. We'll look forward to your company then. Goodbye for now. Thing.